What's up, people? GNR TV, streaming done right. It has all the channels that you would want. You know, the regular channels, channels from out of state, pay-per-views, sports, the movie channels, porn. It has over 2,000 channels in general. Over 2,000 channels. $20 a month for two devices now. Not one, but two devices for 20 bucks, and you get all that amazing stuff. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, there's no sports right now. There's not really many pay-per-views. Well, guess what? There is sports because UFC is back. And there's pay-per-views because guess what? UFC is back, and the rest of the sports will be back eventually, and it's worth it. This app is freaking amazing. I highly, highly, highly recommend it. I've had it for a little over a year now. I'm never going to get rid of it, and I love it. I love it so much. GNR TV, streaming done right. If you don't have it, you need to get it. And enjoy the rest of the show. Let's get slicing and dicing with Sir Sturdy Horror fans. On this podcast, you will hear me and a guest do some movie reviews, random funny horror chats, and whatever else comes to mind. So tune in, kick back, relax, and always remember, I'll see you in your nightmare. Jason's mask. Well, another episode starting, people. Got Steve here, finally. How's it going, man? What's up, man? Um, I really appreciate you getting me on the show. Uh, absolutely adore your show, your group, and everything. So. I'm honored, man. I'm really looking forward to this. I'm really happy to get you on here because I'm a huge fan of your guys' show, the Horror Squad podcast. You guys, hilarious. You guys, just everything you guys do is awesome about it. Like, I like the um the question, the trivia question you guys do for each other against each other. <laughs> That's funny and fun. Your show is funny, entertaining, and you're really engaging with the listeners, which is great. I try to I try to be the same way as far as that goes because with horror fans, I'll say how this all mixes for me with horror fans, with the indie, you know, with the indie scene. And I'll say us with mm-hmm. podcasts. I think a lot of us draw towards the indie scene because we can be included in things as far as like, you know, you buy the movie, you get your name in the credits. They give, they go back and forth with me as far as talking with you here and there. And then as podcasters, we do the same, which means something to people because people like, like, Oh shit, these guys are talking to me to an extent or like with my show. I have people on like all the time. So it's just kind of getting people out, you know, getting other horror fans out there, get their opinions on movies or indie fans out there to get their, you know, and you guys kind of do the same thing. You guys, I know you guys have people on here and there with interviews, which I think is awesome. And I know you guys do indie movies. Even if you don't do a full review, you'll do like a, you know, in the beginning of your show, you do a few minutes of discussing a movie and just, I just love what you guys do, man. It's, it's so great. Thanks, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's a fun show to do. And I really love, talking to people in the horror community it's an amazing community everyone's like so nice and you know everyone will help each other out and it's just it's just a fun community to be with and part of so it's great like i absolutely love doing the show and you were mentioning trivia trivia is a tricky thing to do like i don't know if it comes off that way because so the way it works with our group on our podcast Mm -hmm. is uh so we do trivia all year round and we score it and at the end of the year the winner gets a $30 item from the three other members of the podcast. And when you're doing trivia, you have to do three three trivia questions a week. And it's that balance of making it hard enough. So it's challenging, but not so hard that it's like unfair and just, yeah, it's it's a tough thing to do, but it's so much fun. And uh, yeah, love doing that. See, I'm horrible at trivia. (laughs) Like it's 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 one of those things where I'm just like I really 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 have to think and I'm just like I'm not that great at it I'm like up and down with it and then it is fun I love listening to your guys trivia questions it's it's freaking hilarious yeah I'll tell you what though uh, I, you know so I only started on this podcast around episode like seventy six mm-hmm. as far as being a full time member and when I used to listen to it before uh, I got on you know I'm in the car and they're doing trivia and it's so easy when I'm in the car. Right. Oh God, I'll get them all. It's no problem. When you're recording, the pressure get, gets on you and it's just like you blank, right? Like the most obvious stuff sometimes and your mind is like, holy shit, 
I, I don't know what they, you know, I, I forgot who played Chucky, you know, like just yeah. something stupid like that. Like, obviously I know it's Brad Dourif, but in the moment your mind just blanks and it's, it's interesting. It's it's funny. It's it's so freaking funny. And as I mentioned in the email that I sent you guys with the question, I love how when Joe's reading up everybody's scores, <laughs> and Joe is in third place with four points. I just love <laughs> he refers to himself as instead of saying me because we all know his voice by now. But it's just I hope he keeps doing that. That's fucking hilarious. Yeah, he, he he's hilarious, and he's he always says your boy Joe. He never just says Joe either. It's like your boy Joe. Yeah, boy Joe. Yeah. <laughs> Who's probably listening right now? So <laughs> shout out to uh, Joe, Sam, and I think Todd as well. So I hope my other so. three podcast members are are going to be listening to this live. Awesome, those guys are great. Like I said, you guys are freaking great with this show. Thanks. Keep it going, man, and especially in these times. I don't want to stick on these times too much, but people need that entertainment. They need that laughter, and yeah. I, I feel like that's what we all provide for them. So I guess we just got to keep doing that. Yeah, absolutely. And, if, you know, even just recording is fine. Just to chat with people who are doing horror, which is why I was so excited to do this with you. I loved chatting horror and talking about uh, everything going on in the horror world. And uh, it's awesome. Same here, man. Same here. So this Killer Sofa movie, <laughs> what made you pick this? All right. So, <laughs> um, so we get screeners for my podcast once in a while. Mm -hmm. And I had seen this poster, and based off the poster alone, I was like, this is something I want to see. So we watched the trailer, we reviewed it on the podcast, it looked absolutely ridiculous. And when we got a screener for it, I'm like, oh, I got to see this, like, for sure. So I watched it, and I loved it, man. It's just, it's everything I love about indie horror. It's absolutely ridiculous, but mm -hmm. in a way, they also kind of take it seriously, but not at the same time. And I've been just pushing this as a movie that's fun and that shows what horror can be and uh that's why i picked it uh, i want to discuss it in more detail we only did kind of a what watch segment on my podcast so yeah. to actually like break it down it's going to be something fun yeah this like i i just finished it maybe 10 15 minutes before we started recording and now i have it playing again on mute just to go through it right and this movie is just Ridiculous isn't is an understatement with this, but hmm. yeah, that's what I love about <clears throat> indie movies is they go in some weird, strange directions that I feel like I feel Hollywood would be afraid to, right? Which to me is crazy because as as a horror fan, we watch fucking anything. We're watching a, we're watching a movie about a killer, <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, well, love seat, really, but still, right? And I'm just like, I I love you know what I love about the indie thing. Fresh ideas are not, it's coming from a true horror fan, like a true passion. Silly idea or not, it's still coming from somebody who just really enjoys horror because they're, they're obviously not doing it for the money because, right. you know, they have a small budget. They don't have like a big team behind them. And a lot of times they're released on YouTube, which is awesome. Don't get me, I'm not like undercutting them. A lot of times it's released on YouTube. So it's not like, okay, I'm going to get paid because it's released on YouTube. Right. But it's just, <laughs> this movie is so freaking ridiculous. It's so funny. I was just like, like I would be, I'd watch it, look down because I'm trying to do other things too, and I'm looking over. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's you know, the, the the way the thing about this movie is there's there everything I like about horror, but also what I don't like about horror is in mm -hmm. the same movie. Like I love the sofa character. And I do like. They, they, it, every time the sofa is on screen and going on a hunt or like peeping and stuff like that I, I absolutely adored it but uh also i think they do too much trying to explain why the sofa is doing it and i don't think that was necessary i just like i just with a movie called killer sofa i just want to watch a sofa wreck havoc you know that's what i wanted to see and we did get a lot of that mm -hmm. and i love that but at the same time i think some movies just try to go too much you don't need to explain everything you know sometimes just not knowing is better i mean look at my favorite movie of all time uh, in horror is Dawn of the Dead. You never know why zombies are attacking. You get one line that says maybe, you know, uh, because hell's full that they're starting to walk the earth. But mm -hmm. I don't need to know. I don't really don't need to know. I just accept the fact that the dead are walking and boom, I'm set. So I'm, I'm with you on that 100% with this movie. Didn't need the backstory. Didn't need an exp explanation why. <clears throat> and honestly, if they would have cut that out, they could have added a few more kills maybe some titties and <laughs> just 
it would have made it a better movie, more entertaining movie. Not that it wasn't entertaining, but you could have. It could have been one of those movies where you can completely turn your brain off and not take it serious at all. They try. Yeah. I feel like they tried. Like you said, they tried to make you take it serious in some parts, and then that's kind of where it lost me. Some I still enjoyed it, but like you, again, like you said, if they would have just had it being just a killer sofa movie, don't need to know why, don't care why, killers. Killer Sofa had, like, when I seen that title, I was looking through Amazon Prime, saving things, and my wife was like, no, we're not, I'm not watching this tonight. <laughs> I was like, I'll just put it on my watch list and watch it later. Because <laughs> she, right. she, I'm not sure if your wife's into horror or not. My wife loves horror, but if it's a comedy horror, she won't do it. It's funny, my wife said the exact same thing. <laughs> she, uh, she is really into horror, but she won't watch a lot of indie horror. She won't watch ridiculous horror. Mm-hmm. Uh, she, she likes, like, I guess more than mainstream stuff, I guess I would say. Um, but yeah, this movie is definitely not in her wheelhouse, but totally in mine. So <laughs> same here. Like mine will watch indie horror films if it's a more serious type of thing. But any comedy, I'll give you a great example. There's a movie I'm sure you've heard me talk about plenty of times. Thanks Killing, right? Yeah. I was watching that one day, probably on Thanksgiving actually. And she came in the living room with me. She stayed in there for like two minutes, if that. I was like, I can't take this anymore. I gotta go. I was like, What do you? T- it just started. What do you mean? Right. Get a chance, but you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, they don't all hit with me. You know, there there are some movies that uh, sometimes that just can't get into. And mm-hmm. I don't know if that's something... It could be your mood, too, sometimes, right? Uh, sometimes yeah. you watch a movie one day, it sucks. You watch it another day, you love it. It's, it's It really depends on a lot of things. But um, this one really hit for me. Just the look of the sofa alone when he's... Uh, <laughs> you know, like, when he's trying to dispose of a body, just the sofa is like kicking the body and like throwing it up and throwing it over the rail. It's just, it's so stupid, but it just worked for me. Yeah. This same here, man. Same here. I'm watching the guy right now, bring it up the stairs and it's just. Yeah. No one's helping him with the hell. Come on. Yeah. I'd be so. I love the idea of this movie though. I don't know what they were drinking or smoking when they made this, (laughs) because if this came from a sober mind, that's, that's something. I don't think right. that's from a sober mind, but it's just like, it's just one of those funny things. It's just like, what, what can you make in the household a horror movie, a killer object that most people have, and it would just be fun to do? Oh, a sofa. Everybody sits on a sofa. Why not? And I, I fucking love it. I, fucking yes, I mean, you're right. Someone was high. Someone was like high as fuck on their couch one day. And they look across the room, and they see the recliner, and they're like, holy shit, it's looking at me. It's going to kill me. And then next day, like, shit, that's a great idea. I'm going to write a film. And, oof, kill her sofa. <laughs> yeah. This movie has to be, like, ten times better high. I'm going to have to find out. Yeah, probably, yeah. This is one. <clears throat> and the movie where the sofa's, the one girl's on the sofa, and she damn near has an orgasm. That, you just, like, <laughs> I was so confused when I first watched it, because I was like, what the hell is going on? I was like, what the hell is going on? Is somebody messing with her? And then see, she's just sitting on the damn, the damn recliner. I thought she was gonna start playing with herself. I was like, okay, okay, I see where this is going. But she was just like doing the movements and moaning and all this other stuff, and just she was excited about that damn sofa. I'll tell you. Yeah, what. you're right. I think a rated R would have been better suited for a film like this. Just mm-hmm. really go balls out and uh, bring everything that we love about horror. I think it's a PG film because there isn't that much gore. Uh, there's no nudity, there's no real sexual content other than her kind of getting aroused on the couch. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think a movie like this, you should just go all out and go crazy with it. You ha- Especially with that title, you have to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. It's almost irresponsible not to. Right. <laughs> and again, I'm at the part where they're talking about the background of the sofa and all this stuff. <clears throat> the old guy with the beard, the old white guy with the beard. Yeah, the hair. That-, yeah that, that whole thing. It kind of makes you lose interest because it's. I think if they did it where it was shorter too, as far as these parts, if they if they didn't cut them out but cut them down, right. that might have helped too. Because I don't like when certain movies have too much dialogue and you're like, I don't need to know this. I just want to know who's getting killed next. I don't need to know why you're doing it, who's doing it. I don't. That doesn't matter. I know it's a sofa killing. That's all I need. That's all I freaking need. Like yeah, things. Like Thanks Killing, for example, it did give a little backstory, but it didn't take like twenty minutes through the movie to give the little backstory, and the backstory was even funny. But right. it is it's up and down. 
as soon as they go into like voodoo territory or I don't know, just a lot of these movies have that kind of character, whether it's a priest or a shaman or something that brings these things back to life. We really don't need that. It's just so stupid. It's such a lazy explanation. Just don't explain it. Just have the Silva start killing. You don't know why. I, I don't even want a resolution at the end. I just want the, the sofa to win the day and like set up a second film. You know, so. Yes. Yes. Like fucking put somebody, put it outside free sofa. You're right. Exactly. That's it. That's the last shot. Okay, you just like on the curb and it, self put itself there after killing the whole apartment and tease another film. You know, that's all we needed. We don't need all this <laughs> other, the cop, the like investigation stuff and the voodoo stuff, all that stuff could have been cut out and just has more kill scenes of the sofa. Either creeping on people or straight up killing people. I think. Uh, oh, Joe's in here with us. He said, "Yo, Steve is sexy." <laughs> yeah, he's uh, he's been <laughs> drinking probably. <laughs> That's how he gets when he starts drinking. He starts hitting on you. <laughs> oh yeah, no, are you kidding me? He's always sending me dick pics and stuff. It's uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> no, no, Joe's a cool dude. Uh, yeah, yeah like, he is. Yeah, you know, the the founding member uh, along with Todd of the podcast and. Uh, yeah, it's such a pleasure talking to him and to the rest of the group every week. It's it's cool. Yeah, that, and, your whole crew is real, real, really, really friendly, which I think is just great. And hey, Joe, don't be afraid to call in. Call in, man. Yeah, and also uh, I'll I'll plug it for him. He's got a great horror group uh, on Facebook called Joe's uh, House of Horror. Uh, it's got like seventeen thousand members, I think, and just a chill place for everyone that just talk horror, talk shop. It's uh, oh, I love it. Yeah. And what I love about it is <clears throat> he does he lets people post their own stuff in there too, like podcasts and all mm-hmm. that, which I respect because I, I do the same. Right. I'm only at about seven hundred members, but we're not ca- we're not counting numbers, Joe. But no, <laughs> it's real cool though. Like he <clears throat> shit. I don't have the corona people, don't worry. As long as <laughs> as long as uh shit. <clears throat> all right. As long as it's horror related, he doesn't seem to care. I'm the same way. As long as it's horror related, no bully and no bullshit. Post whatever you want. Don't look yeah, no, absolutely. And he does a great job moderating it because uh, there, you know, when you have a group that's seventeen thousand strong, you get a lot of like stuff, and people are posting, mm-hmm. you know, racist stuff or sexist stuff or stuff like that. And he's quick on the draw. Like I've seen posts come through sometimes, and like right away they get knocked. Yeah. And he's he's a great moderator, and he really. Uh, you really started a great group like you, man. Uh, your group is also that way where it's all really chill people. It's talking horror and it's awesome. And that's how it should be though. Like I don't, I don't care if people try to sell stuff on there. So it's horror related. <clears throat> Just keep it horror. Keep it fun. I guess no politics, no bullying. Right. And people take things too far with that. You want to post that bullshit, go to a different group for that. You know what this is. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, this is our outlet to, you know, not be in that stuff, right? Like, I, I talked about, like, I work for the Canadian federal government, and I talk politics all the time. That's what I do for a living, and I don't want to hear it when I, like, you know, go into my normal life, and horror is my outlet, and, well, horror and gaming, I'd say, are my two big outlets. So I want to go on a group like that and just chat horror. I don't want to talk about what's going on in the world, you know? Game. What system do you play on? All three. Uh, I, uh, I I have no no prejudice against any of them. I play, you know, most of my games I'd say on Xbox One. Uh, a lot of the exclusives in PSVR and PS4. And when I travel, I play my Switch. I'd say more than that at home. For me, it's mainly PS4. Well, it's PS4. Don't have a Switch yet. But, um, so fun. You- me, uh, <coughs> what do I play? Yeah, what do you play these days? World War Z, Friday the Thirteenth. <coughs> Damn it, Friday the Thirteenth, World War Z, and Zombie Army Four are like my top three. Oh, fuck, I, I, I cannot tell you how excited I was when they announced Zombie Army Four because my friends and I went through a Zombie Army trilogy. Uh, we got all the you know, achievements slash trophies for them, mm-hmm. and I loved that game. But I never thought we'd get a sequel. I mean, that game is so old that there are rumors, but I never saw we saw see it. And I, when they came out, I was just thrilled it's such an awesome underrated game it's fucking fun man yeah it's great it's so fun what do you have for the X- xbox uh yeah yeah i have it for the xbox uh mo- most of my multi-platform games would be on there 
Uh, I do play a lot of the exclusives, though, you know, Last of Us and God of War and that kind of stuff. Fun, yeah. Yeah. And PSVR, I'm huge into VR. I absolutely adore it. And uh, I love horror VR. <laughs> like, I, it doesn't phase me at all and just love doing it. I never Ever tried, tried it? it? No, I haven't. I don't have the Pro, though, so I don't know how well the VR would work with the regular PS4. Uh, I don't have a Pro either, and I, it works perfectly. Like, it's, oh, okay. it's works great. Yeah, and I, let me tell you something about uh, horror on VR. It's one thing to watch a horror film and see it play out on a screen, but when you hear like a noise and you actually have to walk into that room yourself, it's a totally different thing. <laughs> and, like it, you, you, you kind of like check it out a little bit. You're like, you know, slowly trying to peek in, and you're you're not <laughs> definitely not as brave in VR as you are. In, uh, yeah, watching the movie. Watching the movie. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. And with yeah. the with the VR thing, is it like with the controller though? Like, I mean, do you have to like be standing to play it, or can you sit down and play it? Or do you have uh, to, it, you know? it, it really it depends on the game. Uh, an example: if you're playing something like uh, Until Dawn, Rush of Blood, uh, it's you, you're like in a roller coaster, and mm -hmm. you use the uh, the move, you know, the two sticks with the <laughs> balls on them, and it's basically like shooting. So you have it's like two guns you have in your hands, and you go through a roller coaster through different themed haunted houses. Like you have one that's uh, zombies, you have one that's ghosts, you have one that's like gore, one that's like spiders. It's really cool. It's crazy, like the scale when you're in VR, you know, things are so huge and creepy and you hear stuff behind you and it's just, it's awesome. Couldn't might, recommend it enough. I might have to actually check that. <laughs> I know with the PS5, see, <clears throat> I'm not going to be rushing to get it when it comes out. I'll let them work the bugs out and right. the money for it. But I know they're going to have the VR with that. And they're going to come out with a new VR thing. I know this one's also going to be compatible with it. So it's just like, it depends on how much the VR system, the VR thing costs now. That'll probably get you. How much is it now? Do you know? Uh, if you, because, you know, it's a whole thing, right? You can't just buy the VR. You have to buy the PS camera, the PSI. And you also need to buy the move, so and so you need to buy the bundle, and that can set you back three, four hundred dollars. Oh, okay. Uh, it's definitely an investment, but I mean, I just I was afraid it'd be one of those things that you know I play for like a week and then it sit you know collecting dust forever. Yeah. But honestly, I've been playing a lot, and sure, I go through phases where I won't play it for a month or two, mm -hmm. but then something else comes out, and I'm just right back in it. Like right now, I'm playing a game called Beat Saber where it's like you have lightsabers and it's kind of like a guitar hero type game, but with lightsabers, it's fantastic. Nice. It's an awesome game. So yeah, I, I love the VR. And I saw you were playing the, uh, this is not VR, but the, did you play the Resident Evil 3 demo yet? Oh, it's not a PS4, right? No, I downloaded okay. it. Okay. I didn't, um, I didn't try, I was gonna, no, I didn't try it out. My brother said he tried to play it and it was saying he couldn't, I forgot why. Yeah, I, I think it's only on Xbox right now because PS4 and PC, uh, there's something not working. That's so. Yeah, but I, I love the remakes. Uh, Resident Evil 2 is fantastic. The uh, the remake of it. I don't know if you played that one. <clears throat> I didn't play that one. The I've I started seven, like a couple months after it came out, and I just put it down. Not even because I was bored with it. Because usually when I game, I'm gaming with similar to how you game with friends and stuff like that. Right. And that's what I'm gaming and streaming at the same time. But I do want to get back into seven. Have you played that Resident Evil Seven? I, I played it in VR. Uh, it's one wow. of the games that has uh, VR integration. Um, <clears throat> and I guess say graphically, it's not very good in VR. So <laughs> the pixelation can get a little off-putting. And because you're playing with a remote control, when you're moving with a remote uh, and you're you're <clears throat> not like physically moving you can get a little like kind of motion sickness because your brain is not like, it's not walking at the same time as you're kind of yeah. walking in the game. So that's a little off putting. So I couldn't play more than an hour at a time, but it was a great game. It was a, it, it was something in VR, man. Like, like I, I played on Xbox and it was, you know, not an okay game, not my favorite Resident Evil game, mm -hmm. but an okay game. But in <clears throat> VR, it was like, it was something quite the experience. I'll say <laughs> I'm going to have to check that out. I may have to check the VR out one of these days, maybe. I did try it at Best Buy for some computer game. I don't remember what it was. And I was so amazed right. by it. I was just like, this is fucking amazing. And the funny thing was, is like, <clears throat> when you're doing the VR with the computer, because you could see like all over the wall and everything. Right. My brother was recording me. So it just looked like my dumb ass is sitting there with something on my face just 
like Stevie Wonder, I guess you could say. <laughs> I'm not playing a piano <laughs> or right. something. But it, that, I had so much fun with that. I had so much freaking fun with that. Yeah, yeah, it's it's awesome. And it's funny how, like, the Beat Saber game I'm playing, you know, it's with lightsabers and how cool you feel when you're doing it. Mm -hmm. And for fun, I recorded myself doing one song, like, in real life to see what it looked like. Oh, my God. It was like the Star Wars kid. Just absolute <laughs> horrifying. <laughs> you know, like, you're just, like, flailing and it just does not look cool whatsoever but in the game you look awesome oh i, so. I know i know because it, it's, it's like one of those things like if say somebody doesn't see you playing the vr they just right. see, fucking see you like through your window they're like what the fuck is he doing oh uh, yeah yeah no, i know i'm so happy that i get to play it alone in my living room and not have anyone uh, you know watching me play because it, it's embarrassing it's it's really not good looking in real life but it's awesome when you're in there is your wife in the games too or not uh, a ton uh, sometimes she'll play some like multiplayer games with me but uh, i'd say overall it's not one of her kind of passions uh, she's more into reading and horror and stuff like that uh, she's a huge stephen king fan like okay. really psycho stephen king fan like we have a whole room dedicated to stephen king in the house uh yeah awesome. but yeah we all have you know different hobbies i guess but she's oh. into horror and that's what connected us in the first place so uh I'm happy about that because it's such a big part of my life that without it, I think it would have been a little tougher. Yeah, I'm mine. Mine does like gaming. She likes more of the old school games like Mario's and stuff like that. And right. She loves loves the freaking Sims games. But oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah, that's like her thing of playing on the computer here and there. <clears throat> but yeah, same thing with the horror thing. That did help. It did help a right. lot. And she and she goes to the cons with us because oh. that goes with my brother. Well, right. Guy. He moved all the way out to Colorado now, but she's been to the past few cons with me. She enjoys those, which is freaking great. Makes it easier. She won't get on the podcast, though. That's one thing she won't do. Just, <laughs> oh, really? It's fine. I mean, it's yeah, fine. I, know. Uh, I yeah. Actually, uh, mine, same thing. Uh, her job prohibits her from having any type of social media uh, like presence at all. She's not allowed to have pictures, a Facebook page, nothing because wow. of what she does. So that's it's like a whole thing. <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, uh, so because of that, like, a lot of people almost didn't believe I had a wife, you know, like, it's just, I would talk about her, but she's never around, uh, but she does come to cons with me, Okay, uh, <laughs> most of the time, like, we we went to uh, Rock and Shock in uh, Worcester, Massachusetts, mm -hmm. uh, I actually went with uh, with Joe, and uh, I met Sam and stuff in Salem as well, and she came to that and stuff like that, so that was cool, but uh, yeah, it's, it's awesome to have someone that you can share your horror passion with, you know? Oh, yeah. Yep. I was looking forward to meeting Joe and um mm. for this past con that Wicked well, Weekend? Yeah. That 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 shit. I was just I was like, this is gonna be so awesome. I finally get to meet this guy. He's he's a cool dude, he's a real cool dude, awesome mm. podcaster. <clears throat> and these people fucked us all over. Yeah, I I've uh, I've been chatting with him for like years, but I've only met him uh, that one uh, in in October when I went to Rocket Chuck. It's the first time I met him. Uh, in person so it was really cool to meet him and sam at the same time uh which i'd also been chatting with for a long time so that was mm -hmm. like really really cool haven't met todd though in person so i'm hoping to do that uh soon you know this year i was actually planning to do some stuff with joe and sam uh for the podcast i was planning to go to some of the cons but now you know with everything going on you don't uh, know, I don't, know. I, yeah yeah who knows <laughs> but, you know it's all the cons are being canceled and i'm hoping still to meet them in october again uh, I was planning to go to Salem and just kind of chill with them, but uh, who knows anymore? It's crazy. And we're also, I was also thinking of going to Maine. Apparently they're going to do a pet cemetery screening in the cemetery where they filmed it in, in you know, uh, awesome. like a whole thing. So we're, and that's like kind of right between where we live. Mm -hmm. We live about eight hours from each other. So I think that would have been cool as well, but the world's changing and I don't know. Hopefully I get to see him sometime soon. Yeah, man, same here. <clears throat> like, I was support I was going to be going to, um, which I don't know if I am or not now. We were going to be going to Colorado because my <laughs> brother lives out there. And there's a con going out there. There's a horror convention going out there around where he lives in Denver. And it's a Friday, Saturday, Sunday con. It's his birthday weekend. September 13th is his birthday. So it's his birthday weekend. It's like the first con out in that area. And we we're going to, me and my wife are going to go out there. But we're going to get our tickets like around now. But now it's just like you got to, you can't just go get, you got to save. 
You got to save right. everything now and just kind of – because you don't know what's going to happen. Like, right now, I'm out of work, but I'm getting paid. Like, I work for the state, but okay. I'm not essential, so they're paying me to stay home, which is fine. But right. it's just like you don't know what's going to happen in the next couple of weeks. And with her job, too, she's essential. She works at an OBGYN office. She doesn't do the fun stuff, though. Right. But, <laughs> but um, <clears throat> hers is a private practice. So I'm not, I don't know how, I don't know how any of this shit works, to be honest with you. So it's just kind of like, you got to take care of what's most important first, unfortunately. I mean, well, you know what I mean? Like, unfortunately, right. I don't have the funds to just, you know what, fuck it. I'm just going to Colorado in September and doing this. Because if I could, I'd be going to every con all the time. But Absolutely. Yeah. That's actually the same weekend that I was planning to go to Halloween Horror Nights in uh, mm-hmm. Orlando. Uh, which Joe and Sam were supposed to go to as well, but even then, and now I don't know with all this stuff going on. Uh, have you ever been to like um, like a fair type haunt at either Halloween Horror Nights or uh, some of the other no, how are, parks do it too? How are they? <clears throat> uh, fucking amazing! Like, uh, so I went for the first time on my honeymoon in 2011, and right. I've been going like every year since. It's you know, you go to this theme park, and the whole like night, it's all horror. There's people trying to scare you. There's haunted houses. There's fantastic merch. Uh, there are shows. It's just like a really cool night where you get to hang out with all horror fans and just have a ton of fun. And I go every single year. Absolutely adore it. And uh, this year was Halloween Horror Nights 30. So we're expecting something big, but who knows what's going to happen now. And, uh, it's great, great time. We were also planning to go to um, it's Blairstown, New Jersey. Okay. And Friday the thirteenth, the original Friday the thirteenth. It's the fortieth year, forty year anniversary, and like over there is where that cemetery was and the scene, right. and a couple other scenes from there you can see. We're gonna go there for that, but again, I don't know what the hell's going, on, what's gonna be going on by May, and that was gonna be a great, great freaking time for that. And it's just this damn Corona fucked everything all up. It's gonna fuck up the summer. <laughs> it seems like, yeah, it. come on, yeah. Who knows how long this thing's gonna last? It's uh, crazy times. I'm just happy that. I'm considered an essential service, but I can do it from home. So I'm super lucky. You know, I know a lot of people aren't that lucky and it's, it sucks. It does. Now, how is it, how is it up there though in Canada, as far as with all this going on? Like, is your, so is your does your government actually care about you guys and helping out? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We actually have, well, you know, from my perspective, we have actually really good government right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and I work for the government, so I get to see kind of behind the scenes as well, like from not just what the media kind of spews out. Yeah, and they're they're doing I think as good a job as they can. Of course, people are going to complain and say they can do more, they can do this, they can do that, but it's complicated because I work for the government and we are very affected. I work for Border Service, mm-hmm. so the border is right now is having a lot of stuff, right? Like we're closed and all that stuff. So I get to see kind of you know when he says something. Uh, there's a lot of work that comes down to, to enforce those things. And it's not as easy as just saying, okay, everything's shut down. You know, there's, there's a lot of logistics to it. There's a lot of people's lives and the balance. And yeah, I got to say, I'm pretty impressed with the way they've been handling it. That's good. I can't say yeah. a about this. Well, <laughs> it, it's up and down, mm-hmm. but it's just, you know, that guy that runs the country, I, I don't like him. He, right. <laughs> I, I don't get it, man. I know this isn't politics. I'm going to get off this one real quick, but I just feel I'll just say this one thing. As far as politics go, I really don't think there should be Republican, Democrat, left, right, whatever the hell you want to call it. It should be who's right for the job. There shouldn't be two different parties. It should be who's right for the job, who's really going to make changes and help everybody out. It shouldn't be because from my perspective, what I see is somebody who's a Republican, somebody who's a Democrat, as far as the people who vote, no matter how terrible that person is, you're still going to vote for that person just because that's your part. That's stupid. It's right. irresponsible. Yeah, you need a middle. That's really what you need is a, like a middle party, one that just takes the best of both sides and combines yeah. them. And it's, yeah, it's that's not going to happen. It, oh, no, hell no. Never. Right. <laughs> no, exactly. It's, uh, but actually, you know what? In, uh, in Canadian politics, so we have like five or six parties. It's not just two. Uh, now there are two main ones, you know, the left and the right party, but there are like a ton of other parties. So we do have options and that's something that I enjoy in the way we do it here in Canada. Mm-hmm. So if we're really pissed off at the two main parties, there are other options and that's, uh, that's good. Uh, yeah, it's really good. And right now uh, we have this thing called a minority government 
where there is a ruling party, but they, for any bill to pass, they have to get the support of one of the other parties uh, because they don't have full power. And mm -hmm. it's, it's actually working well because that means they're held accountable for any decision they make. So it can't just be their party deciding something. It needs to have the approval of, an, of another party. So That's good. That's politics, you know. It's a <laughs> yeah, it's <clears throat> yeah. I don't. I don't pretend I know about them because I don't. That's why I do. That's why I talk about horror because like, right. <laughs> I can just throw a movie. I'm like, oh yeah, this movie. Yeah, it makes plenty of sense. There's a killer sofa running around. Right, right. That. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have you seen anything else uh, pretty good lately, or anything? Uh... Um, honestly, lately, like I, I did. I think today's like my 14th or 15th show since last Thursday. Right. I've just been plugging, plugging away, and it's been either recording with like indie indie horror people that have indie go goes going on. Right. A couple random horror. Last night I did Friday the Thirteenth Part Five. Nice. Um, oh shit. I think I did Prom Night recently. Oh, fuck, okay. I forgot. What movie did I? I just watched a movie the other day, All Alone. Okay. From '82. I got to rewatch that though. But that was. That was interesting. That was very interesting. Have you ever seen that? No, I haven't. It's uh, it's like a like like a home invasion movie, and mm -hmm. well, it's it falls under home invasion, but pretty much what it is is it's like a I'm trying to think of the premise. You know what? I forgot. I'll I'll send you the thing because <laughs> <laughs> this it's just one of those things. You know, you just for me, like like I said, I've been watching doing stuff for the past since last Thursday, and everything's just like combined into one now i'm just like what was it this movie this movie this movie right i just know it was interesting but i will yeah i'll send you something about it yeah awesome yeah uh i've been watching so Stuart gordon passed away uh last week yeah uh, you know claimed director and we're doing a tribute show on our next podcast next oh. week so i'm like re-watching everything he's ever done and it's just like so cool to see a uh, person's like progression like kind of going chronologically yeah. from the beginning as, as much as I can, you know, I'm not doing everything cause it's a lot of movies, but, mm -hmm. uh, and it's, it's cool to see someone's progression as far as filmmaking. Cause you do see similarities, but you also see like a growth and, uh, it's been awesome just going through his films and, uh, he's got some good films and castle freak is a good one. Um, that I recommend reanimator of course, probably his most famous yeah. fantastic film. So yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, I gotta dig into some more. Like, I have no more shows today. I think I have one tomorrow, so I probably will just go downstairs later and watch some horror movies with my wife. I have no idea what we're gonna watch. Just throw something on, pass the day. But, and then I'll probably be gaming later. Get high and game. <laughs> yeah, what are you gonna What are you gonna play today? Um, I, well, it depends. If Resident Evil is finally up, I'm gonna try that demo out. If not, maybe that Predator demo. I heard that was okay, at least. Did you try that yet? No, I haven't. Uh, I am interested in seeing it. Apparently, it's a lot like Friday the 13th. Uh, yeah. She said you play. How do you feel about Friday the 13th? <sighs> Up and down. <laughs> yeah. Like, I I love the idea they had in the beginning, and just, I understand why they had to stop, which sucks. Right. It's a fun game. It, it does get kind of repetitive. It's a fun game. But I just kind of, I don't know. I, I kind of wish, like, the way they did the game <laughs> was which I'm sure they would have if they could have, was like uh, with each, from each movie, you know, take a scene from each movie and just kind of be in that world and, or that, you know, that scene or whatever. Right. Like, uh, for example, like Jason Takes Manhattan, it would have been cool if you had him, because he's not really in Manhattan, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if, you had, if you did have like the Manhattan scene as one and then you had the boat scene as another, I think that would have been pretty fun. Right. Jason X on the ship would have been amazing. Right. It's just... It's like I said, it's too repetitive. Um, I don't know. It's fun though. Don't get me wrong. It's a fun game. I just, I wish I could have done more with it. What yeah, do you it's fun with friends, I find. There you go. But if you're playing alone, if you're playing with random people, it's just not as fun. Uh, it's I just, agree. yeah, that, and that's the problem with it. And you can't just have one friend. You got to have like four or five friends because then you can have kind of a full game and really experience it. But, Mm -hmm. To get four or five friends together and play that game is not the easiest thing. You know, especially like, I don't know about you, but a lot of my friends are married, have kids. So it's like to get together to play something, it's, it's rare, unfortunately. And that's just the way it is. Yeah. yeah. Same here for the most. I mean, 
when when we do all get together, it's usually on the weekends playing super late at night. The kids are asleep. The wives exactly. are Exactly. Which is fine, but it's just like it's not as easy all the time because then you get tired. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was just playing uh, – I was going through Halo 5 with my college buddies last night. We went to like 3.30 in the morning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's just it's, – it's great. But, man, uh, at my age now, and you know, when I got up this morning, it was not easy. <laughs> Yeah, it's not as easy as it used to be, that's for damn sure. Hell no, it isn't. <laughs> like, I'm at the point now, man. Like, I took a nap earlier today. I didn't mean yeah. it. My wife was watching something downstairs. So I was like, all right, I'll go up in the room and lay down and just watch TV. About 10 minutes in, I'm out. Wake up, it's 12 o'clock. Right. <laughs> and then it, it's, there's that, and it's just, it's funny, though, because you used to make jokes about people that just, you know, you just sit down and watch TV on the couch. I'll doze off. And I'm just like, this is bullshit. I'm not even right. tired. You sit down like I'm wide awake. Fucking sleep. <laughs> no, for sure. And drinking, man. Oh. <laughs> so I decided it was going to be a good idea. Monday night, I did Killer Clowns, Killer Clowns from Outer Space with one of my friends. Another right. podcaster, by the way. He does uh, stories from a bar podcast. He pretty much goes to um, different breweries and bars. Nice. Like mom and pop shops, not like a big chain. Right. And records with either like an owner or somebody that works there, talks about the bar, talks about the beer he's drinking, promote, you know, kind of promotes the beer, then has like a cool conversation. Right. And he also does something on the show called the Statesman series, which is hilarious. He did, yeah. he did Florida. Well, I was on one with him so far. He did Florida Man, which is just oh, stupid yeah, ass. That's a crazy story. From state, stupid people from different states. Hmm. Fun, fun show. But yeah, so I decided to pull out some um 100 proof southern comfort and did eight shots of that and i was good throughout the show but as soon as we were done recording i recorded my attic mind you went down went all the way downstairs to eat and that was it <laughs> yeah right <laughs> i was like I, I woke up the next day at like four in the morning i wasn't drunk anymore but i was just i was just was not feeling great i was like this that was a horrible idea i'm yeah. 34 is too old to be doing shit like that <laughs> it, 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 is that your drink of choice? Southern That's Comfort? What, yeah. Southern Comfort is my favorite drink. That's our 21st birthday. That was the first bottle I bought, man. Oh, my favorite right. drink. Uh, it's 18 here in Canada. So like 21. Yeah, that's right. It's, uh, oh, yeah, we, we, we drink early here. <laughs> that's why you guys are so nice and happy. Yeah. We've legalized. We can drink early. We can, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, how, how long was weed legalized for? Uh, it got legalized... A year and a half ago now. Oh man! And so for, Octo yeah, October of 2018. For all of Canada or just all, all of Canada? Yes. Yeah. That that's what they need to do here. Like it's legal in certain states. That's just that's stupid. <laughs> like come on, no, make yeah, it it everywhere for everybody. No, and it's you know it's 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 great. Uh, I I personally don't really do it, but I know people do, and it's great for them. You know, it's uh, especially it's very we use it a lot medicinally here in Canada. Like mm -hmm. you'll go to um. Like if I go to get medication at a drugstore, there will be signs that say, "Ask us about our marijuana plan." You know, like it's really like people have really embraced it. And to everyone who's like afraid that the world's going to go crazy because it's legalized, no difference. Like the, people aren't acting crazy in the street. There's nothing. It just, it didn't change anything as far as anything. It's yeah. just people can get it easily, and they've been doing it responsibly, like alcohol. Right? It's it's a choice. It's either you responsible with it or you're not, and it's the way it is. But that's you're, good. No, you're you're right about that. And I mean, <clears throat> I'll bring up the thing. How how many times have you heard of somebody getting really high and getting into a fight, or you know what I mean? They'll get yeah. high and eat something and laugh and fall asleep. That's that's about as much production as you're gonna get. Or play some games, whatever. Versus drunk. You're about drunk people fighting. Right. <laughs> All yeah, exactly. The and it's yeah, legal. No. no, exactly. I mean, alcohol is way worse. That's. Uh... And it, it's a real problem for some people, but um, yeah. you no, know, no one talks about that. You know, yeah, it's just you keep, I don't know how it is in the U.S. so much. You can get it anywhere, corner store, grocery store. You know, there's alcohol everywhere. You can just get it at any time. It's, it's, well, not any time. I guess it's between seven and eleven. But it's yeah, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, it, I mean, pretty much the same. Not maybe not liquor, but as far as like beer, you can get it from like the like, grocery stores and all that, or the gas station. Right. But yeah, and then. Again, with the marijuana, as you're saying, with the medicinal stuff, a lot of medicinal benefits from it. a lot. Damn near, yep. I feel like damn near everything. And there's like not really a side effect to it because they can. They a lot of the stuff they take out the THC, so you're not getting high. 
and you're just getting the, you know, whatever the benefit is for pain relief, stomach pain, whatever. If you can't eat, you smoke that and you're good. Just right. anxiety, like a whole bunch of stuff. It really helps people calm down, sleeping, CBD and all that stuff. Yeah, and if you watch a movie with a killer sofa, it just makes it that much better. So. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? What, you can watch it in any movie, and it'll make it better. At least you think yeah, it's better. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> think it's better. Yeah, that, that, that's what say. So all you got to do is get some weed, watch Tubi because they got a lot of like indie stuff on there. Oh, and yeah. just sit back, you know, have a pizza and you're, you're set, man. It's, <laughs> Tubi, Tubi is fucking great. I, I love it. Like, it's, I, I just can't get enough of it because here in Canada, we have a problem where a lot of movies aren't available the same way in the U.S. Uh, our Netflix is, uh, is way watered down. Our Amazon Prime is way watered down. So Tubi seems to be, we get the same things and it's awesome just to get movies that like full moon trauma, stuff like that. Very hard to get in Canada. It's not, you, you almost have to buy it from the U S but when I buy it from the U S I pay a 40% premium. So anything I buy in the U S I have to pay 40% more just because it's in America. It's, it's crazy. So to have a service that's free where I can watch all the films, I'm just going nuts. I'm just oh, hell yeah. plugging away. You know, <laughs> How is um Shutter out there? Uh, Shutter, we get less stuff, but not it's not as bad. So you guys, you guys will get like fifteen films, and a month we'll probably get like twelve. Okay. You know? So th there'll be like three or four films. Usually, the big mainstream stuff that we won't get in Canada, uh, we will get the Shutter exclusive, which is awesome. Um, so there's that, but yeah, it's it's definitely watered down, and it's interesting because when I go to the U.S. and I go to the U.S. quite a bit. Uh, other than Amazon Prime, I get the U.S. version once I cross the border. So mm -hmm. Netflix, Shutter, all that stuff, I get what's in the U.S. And it's always like, holy shit. <laughs> and I tend to like super consume everything so I can kind of get everything out before I get back across the border. It's, uh, oh, yeah, it's awesome. It's so crazy. I never even, I mean, I heard you explaining it on the show, before, your show before, but that's crazy. <clears throat> it's just like, what the fuck? Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a stupid, archaic law that was, I think it's written in the 60s or 70s where a service in Canada has to have a certain percentage of British content. So uh, Commonwealth, like whether it's uh, British, Australian, Canadian, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And because of that, we, you have to have like less, I guess, American stuff in there. So we get cut a lot of stuff for that. And it's such a stupid law, oh. especially now with streaming and everything that was written back in the TV days. But yeah, yeah. stupid. That, that doesn't because with the streaming, it should, I feel with streaming, it should be damn near unlimited. Is what whatever you want to stream, right. and watch, you should be able to. No, exactly, and it's so frustrating to go on YouTube or you know, like somewhere will share a clip on your group or on Joe's group, and I, you know, I'm interested. I click on it, and then it says not available in your country. Come oh on, God. <laughs> like, yeah. it's, there's, uh, there's no. Well, actually, I'll ask you that after we're done recording. <laughs> yeah, there, no, I, I, could, I could talk. There, there is a workaround. You can get, like, ExpressVPN or something like that. Okay. Where you, you pretend to be on a US IP. But because of what I do for a living, I'm not allowed to do things like that. So uh -huh. I'm kind of in a weird place for that. But, yeah, it is uh, it is what it is. So you find workarounds. You know, you find services. I rent a lot. So okay. I'm kind of lucky in that way. Uh, I rent on my Xbox a lot of films. They have almost everything available there. So, I mean, it sucks to pay, you know, four or five bucks every time, but I'm such a big fan and I see it as, uh, you know, contributing to those films, especially when it's indie horror. Yeah. Um, like I said, Killer Sofa, I saw uh, for free because it was sent to us as a, uh, like something to review, but I liked it and I want to support it. So I actually bought it afterwards, even though I had seen it just okay. because I want to kind of support them. And I do that a lot because I think it's important to support indie horror and whether it's films or even creations. Like I try to buy not so much mainstream items. I try to go on like Etsy and stuff like that and mm -hmm. support people who are doing that, you know, kind of as a passion rather than as a business venture. I'm, uh, with, yeah. I'm with you on that. I, I do think it's really important to try to help the indie scene out in general. And right. small businesses, all like I'm, I'm all about that. My thing with that is like, as long as it's a good business, I'm all about it. Like if you're, I, you could be a local business, and be shitty and have great product. I'm just gonna walk right past you. It's like I would any, anywhere else. No, I, exactly. th I think that's the one thing that people don't really understand when they have their own business. They feel like, okay, well, this is my own business. You know, you should buy from here, this, that, and the third. But it's like if you're treating people like garbage, why? why? <laughs> right. Exactly. 
why? But yeah, yeah I, I I love the indie scene. That's that's another reason why I have like I try to get as many indie people on here as possible, as far as actors, actresses, directors, whatever the case may be, whatever they're doing, and let them talk about their projects on here and share in my group their you know their indie go goes and all that. And I back as many as I can if I can back them if I can afford to back them all, I would. But I don't have that kind of money right now. <laughs> no, yeah, no, for sure. I'll actually have to hook you up. I have a friend of mine who's making his first film right now. A uh, horror film called The Rage. His name is Stephen uh, The Rock. Uh, really cool guy. Uh, been you know Canadian dude, and he's making his first film, an indie film. And yeah, I, I, I'm gonna connect you guys because I think awesome. Uh, yeah, it's, it's it's cool. You got uh, one of the stars from Black Christmas in the nice. film, the one who had the bag over her head. Nice. And it's facing on her name right now, but uh, yeah, it's cool. It's just awesome to see people doing kind of horror projects that they're passionate about and. Uh, that's yeah, great. I, I love when you have people like that on your show. I was, I watched, what was it? Is it Red Summer? No. Something Summer Massacre that you had. Was it you that had that? Uh, the trailer? Was it the trailer review or was it? Um, may, maybe. I, there, there's an indie film I watched because I watched the cast on your show. I don't remember what it is off the top of my head, but I, I just love when you do that. It's just, it's cool to see people talk about their projects and then I try to seek it out and it's, it's awesome. Well, see, I look at it as it helps us all grow. <laughs> If I have these indie people on here, as you just said, as you just attested to, you checked it out because you heard about it on, on my show. And it's like, that also that helps me because then it's going to be like, hey, you should listen to this show. He talks to a lot of indie people. And with them, they're, with, with them, the indie people that come on, they're going to share it out. Like, hey, I was on this episode. Even if they only shared that episode, hey, I was on this episode. You should check it out. And, you know. And vice versa. And I've even had a couple indie people come on here, like reach out to me, which that right there was just like a whole, I never thought that would happen when I made this podcast. Right. Like they'll send me an email. Like I hear what you do for the indie community and I freaking love it. Can I come on your show? I'm like, of course. Yeah. Let's set something up. And just, I, I, and everybody's like, why do I, I just love horror. I don't do it. I don't do it. To, I mean, yeah, I love getting the extra listens and all that, but I don't do it for that. I just do it for the passion of loving horror. I would do this podcast if only, two people listen to it because it's just fun. Right. To do. It's fun to talk to other people about horror and just, again, especially around these times, just to get, get it, get away from the real world for a couple hours or however the case may be. But it's just, I love it, man. But yeah, definitely send, send them my info or, you know, get us connected. Yeah. Right. Cause that's going to be cool. That'd be real cool. Are you going to be in this movie? No, uh, no, he doesn't live uh, that close to me. Okay. It's like four, four or five hours away, but I will support it in any way I can. You know, yeah. it's, uh, it's like anything. Um, I, I just, yeah, if I can help anyone, even if it's putting one set of eyes more than they would have had, you know, yeah. otherwise, I'm, I'm totally happy with that, right? It's, uh, that's what I love about what we do and having a podcast and having a platform that can reach a certain amount of people. It's, it's great to just kind of plug those movies and those projects. And, yeah. It really is. It really is. And I mean, as far as like backing them, I know some people say they can't afford to back them all the time, like myself, but at, right. the very, at the very, very least, it takes two seconds to hit the share button once or twice and just share it right. all over the place because that right there helps a shit ton for people. And I, I look at it like we share all these silly ass memes all day, every day anyway. Just boom, share. That's it. Right. <laughs> that's it. No, absolutely. Yeah. And again, that's not going, that's not benefiting anyone to share a meme, but the benefit, the, it benefits big time to share sure. any type exactly. of uh, indie project or creator or everything like that. So for sure. I actually have some guys, um, they're called the nightmare shop. Mm -hmm. They have their own shop. It's everything's like online. They don't have like a brick and mortar store, which is a good thing, especially around now. So they can still do what they have to do, but uh, you should check them out. I don't know if they ship to Canada though. I, right. I want, I don't want to assume they do. And I don't, I don't know anything about shipping out of the country. I don't know anything about it. I don't know about the cost or nothing, but <laughs> they're, they're real cool guys. And they can get, I think they can get down there anything as long as you just, you know, obviously give them some time, but they have some cool stuff already in their shop. And it's just big, big, horror. I've had them on here quite a few times. They're huge, huge horror fans. And that's the type of people I really try to support is, I mean, the horror, you know, cause we're a horror industry really huge in the horror and then like really good people like you could be really huge in the horror be an asshole i'm not gonna i'll skip over that but if you're really cool and then really in the really cool really nice and a genuine person that makes me want to help out even more 
versus, you know, the, you know how people are, man. Yeah. Uh, how's the horror community in your area, like where you live? Is it strong? Is there a lot of love for um, horror in your area? I'm in New York. I'm in, well, it's Schenectady, New York, mm-hmm. which is like three or four hours from the city. It's, uh... It's not too bad. Like, it's not huge. You wouldn't know that there's horror fans around, I guess. Like, you would go into Massachusetts, like Salem, where Joe is. Yeah, right. <laughs> but I do feel like, I don't know. It's it's tough. Like, I feel, because we don't really have cons here in Albany. We'll have them, like, two, three hours away where you'll see a lot of people. But I do feel if we had, like, a horror convention here, a lot of people from here would show up to it. So I guess that would help kind of count the numbers more. You're, you're kind, you, you see them come out of the woodworks a little more and more now here and there right. it's still it's still kind of tough to kind of like figure that out but i will say one thing i love about cons is with the horror conventions it's cool seeing as far as you know me being a black man seeing other black people that i haven't grown up with like or you know personally right. know, that are into horror it's cool seeing women that are really really into horror and it's 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 such a welcoming community and like, we don't care gay, straight, black, white, don't care about your politics. Don't care about your, your changes with the whole gender thing. Not like when you go to these cons, nobody cares. Right. Everybody really wants to be there. Everybody has a genuine great freaking time. And I love it, man. Have you ever done a panel? Uh, no. So actually I got invited to one when I went to rock and shock. Uh, because we did have a table as far as our podcast went, mm-hmm. but I had to get back to Canada. It was uh, Thanksgiving in Canada that weekend. So uh, I had to like drive back early that morning. So unfortunately I couldn't do the panel. Uh, Joe did, which was awesome. I watched it uh, online later. Uh, I was hoping to do it this year. There are a few conventions that we were invited to. Uh, we were actually supposed to host Wicked Weekend uh, as far as our podcast went, right? Yep. And so we were going to host pa- like panels and a bunch of stuff which that turned out to hold be a whole damn thing. But uh, yeah, I know, unfortunately, I haven't had a chance, but just getting to have a table was already like a cool thing because I've been to so many cons and to actually like have people coming to our table was, was a huge thrill. So I'm hoping to do that again soon, but right now it's just, you know, it's all TBD. Um, yeah, I'm with you on that, man. I've been on a few panels and then as far as, I'll get into that in a second, but as far as the table thing goes, it's so awesome. The first time I was behind a table was with my friend Anthony, who's another podcaster. Video Game Crosstalk. His podcast talks about video games, science, and technology. And you, it, his, the thing about his podcast is, like, you learn some things, but in, like, a fun, funny way. So you don't, you don't really listen to it as, like, an educational podcast with certain topics because it's funny. But um, I helped him out uh, here on two different with two different cons and it was just cool. Like people coming up asking about the podcast and talking about it. And if he wasn't at the table, I'll just, you know, talk about his podcast. If he's there or not, i will talk about the podcast and all that. And what I, another thing I would do is like, we were at one. What was, I forgot what the thing was called, but we were at one over here and Robert England was here. He came up to Albany, him and uh, Amanda Wiss. Nice. And this is, this is, I think this is before I started my podcast or before, or I was just starting out. I I forgot, but it wasn't where it is now. And I was helping him again for that weekend. So great, great freaking time. And I, what I was doing is like doing video, like I was doing like Facebook live videos the whole weekend and tagging the, tagging the podcast, tagging my page and tagging him. And once the show was over, this lady came over with her business card and she was like, Hey, you guys should sign up for uh, such and such a con and try to get media passes because the way you guys are promoting like all weekend and handing out cards, just promoting the con all weekend. I was like, cool. I, I didn't get the media pass because my following for the podcast and stuff wasn't big enough at the time. I I don't remember. If, or he couldn't do it. Cause it was out of the, um, it was out of the state and he had just had a child, you know, at that time. So he couldn't go. And I couldn't, like, I didn't get the media pass. So I just, I just didn't go or else I would have, but it was just being behind the table, such a freaking cool experience when people are actually, Cause you feel like one of the you feel like one of the celebrities there, cause people are actually coming up there right. asking about your thing, just talking to you and all this other stuff. And I'm just like, this is so cool. And then being on a panel, man, it's 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 fun. I was on a few with um, I do do them at uh, Scarecon because they want you to do panels when you because you get the right. meet ask for your podcast. And I like they did ha- they had a couple of them like uh, what was it something about podcasting like starting up a podcast pretty much. And then I was on one with um, some of the Friday the 13th Part 7 cast, which was freaking amazing. Nice. 
They had us do Halloween, the Rob Zombie Halloween. They had us in a small room for that. That was just me and two of my good friends. And those are pretty much like, if I'm not up there with like one of the celebrities or, you know, something like that, I pretty much freestyle the whole thing. And I, I always try to engage with the crowd and always let them in, be involved. And I do that because I've, I've sitting in on panels before where you're just sitting there, no matter who it is, you're sitting there just listening to the person talk and you can't really like engage. Like you have things in your mind you want to say or ask, and they're not really letting you do that. So I try to do that. And it flows better and it keeps everybody there. Like it keeps everybody in the seats and gets more people coming in the room. Okay. And they, I can't wait to see you on them. I know you'll have a blast on a freaking panel, man. Yeah, I, I can't wait to do it. Uh, but you know, right now I'm just happy going to cons, right? It's I love oh. going to cons. It's just it's cool to see uh, people where they're like minded and you get to meet a lot of awesome, uh, you know, people. And I got to meet some people that I known through either YouTube or stuff, and that was awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, do uh, have you been recognized like outside of a con yet? It's it's a weird feeling. <laughs> um, actually, at, outside of a con. Yeah. Oh. Uh... Funny story. Actually, not not really outside of a con. I was gonna say at a con, yes, but um, my stepdaughter's friend, one of her friends, listens to my podcast. Right? She was listening to it, listening to it. Didn't know that the whole time that it was me, because she would see like she would see my wife and she would see my stepdaughter like posting in the group and all this stuff and sharing stuff about the pod about the podcast or just posting in my group. And one day she was like, uh, what, I don't know, I don't know how the conversation came up, but she was just like. She, they were talking about it. She's like, well, you know Sir Sturdy? She's like, yeah, it's my stepdad. <laughs> like, Are you serious? She's like, I love his yeah. show. Da, 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 da. And so, like, stuff like that. And then I've, I've had, um, I've had, like, when I, because, like, I'll reach out to people as far as, like, just tell them about my show and about, you know, the group and all that good stuff and my, like, all my social medias, my Twitch and all that. And some people are like, oh, this is, I've been listening to your show. I'm like, oh, that's fucking awesome. But as far as, like, out and about, no. Maybe if I was in a different area, it was like more like again, like Massachusetts was like more horror ish. Right. And then maybe if people see my face more, because like my logo is just I'm not on there, but now I'm right, right. stuff on my green screen. So have you? Yeah, a few times, and it's weird. It's super friggin' weird. Uh, I I got recognized three times on one trip. So when I went to Halloween Horror Nights uh, a couple of years ago, it wasn't for the podcast; it was for my YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to do unboxings and uh, I was doing pretty well as an unboxer for a while. And the first, the person at the airport before I was going to Florida recognized me from the unboxings. Then my waiter, once I was in Florida, recognized me. And then someone at Halloween Horror Nights itself recognized me. And it was such a weird feeling. Like it just, I don't know. It's uh, it's odd, but I guess it's something that it's just nice to talk to people who are like-minded and it's just, yeah. It was awesome, but it was just so awkward. I don't know. I just, you don't expect it, right? Because I, I don't have, like, a very big following at all. So to have someone to actually, like, see, saw you from something and knows you from something, um, they were probably tipped off, though, because uh, I don't know if you used to do, uh, like, any of those subscription boxes back mm -hmm. when they were popular. Yep. But uh, so I, I mainly did horror block and, like, nerd block and stuff like that at the time. And horror block had a t-shirt every month yeah and so if i wore that t-shirt out people would kind of see the t-shirt from far and kind of that's how they'd recognize you you know somewhat more so than your face mm -hmm. and i think that's what it was but yeah it was, it was interesting an interesting experience it is it is like i've been cons i've been recognized that and like not even by my table just like walking around and stuff and what's funny is this past, I was at Scaricon in October, but I missed the one in June. I was going to go to that, but, you know, money got a little tight. Right. And I was supposed to go to that. I was nominated for, I know Joe, those guys, they won the podcast award. They, won they the did, yeah. awards. I was, I was nominated for a few. So I was supposed to be at that, right? So I go to the next con, and one of the guys that runs the con, I've never met him, never met him in person. And I'm walking around, and at one point, he has, like, the loudspeaker. He's like, hey, there's Sir Sturdy. You skipped the con. You could have probably won an award. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. But it was just – I, man, cons are just so freaking – like I like I said, man, honestly, if I could travel and do them all the time, I would because they're just so fun. It's so rewarding. And I'm definitely – like, from here on out, when they do come back up and when I can afford it – as far as bringing this, getting a table and all that, that's usually a media thing, so I'm not worried about that. But the VIP – have you ever done VIP for those cons? Once and it was uh, it was cool. It was really really cool. It so. was 
the best experience I've ever had. Just did this past October. It's like the best experience I've ever had at a con. It's it's if you can afford it, it's worth it. Right. And like we didn't even use it as far as like getting into you know like getting in the lines earlier. Right. Because again, I had the media pass. So I had to get up and set up early anyway when I when we did set up our tables. Right. But um, just just the experience of going to the VIP party was was what I wanted. That's the main reason we did was going to the VIP party, hanging out with them and just getting that experience. Cause you, you, you don't think you never think you're going to drink with some people that you've been watching in movies since you were little or whatever the case may be like having a beer with them. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's freaking awesome. That was like my main experience. That was the best. It was the best experience. Like we did that and we were drunk. Obviously we got drunk, <laughs> <laughs> but um, we, so me and my brother, we went back up to the room my wife was already in bed. I don't know if she was asleep or just like laying down. And Jason Lively was drunk, running up and down the hallways, knocking on people's doors. <laughs> right. So, and I, I, I think I just walked out the bathroom for some reason. I had my shirt off. And I was like, "Yo, I'm talking to my brother." I was like, "Yo, I want to go out there." I was like, "But I don't have a shirt on." Huh. And drunk conversations are hilarious because they don't ever make sense. And I don't know. He was like, "Yeah." He was like, "I do too," but because uh, I don't think it would be a good idea. And my wife, the whole time, she's laying there here listening to us. She didn't say anything, though. And so the next day, we're talking about it. First, before I get into that, my brother wakes up with candy wrappers stuck all over him. <laughs> <laughs> like, he just, had, he just like laid in bed eating candy. Can't break. Stuck all over him. Looked like a kid. So we're talking about it the next day. And she's like, yeah. She's like, yeah, I heard you guys talking about it. She's like, you should have just went out there. I was like, well, we, I was like, there's a couple reasons why we didn't go out there. I was like, one, I was like, the biggest reason we didn't go out there is because we didn't want you to get mad and yell at us. Like our children, because you know we get we act like children. She was like, I wouldn't right. even care. I was like, you couldn't have said something if you were up that whole time. <laughs> I would have run down up and down the hall with Jason Lively knocking on doors, drunk. Right. But it was because he knocked on because it was funny because he knocked on our door. My brother went to the peephole and he was like right there. They ran to the next door, knocking on the door, and we left the next day. Well, not left the con, but we went our room the next day. You seen beer bottles just sitting on a table, <laughs> right. empty cups and shit. It was just, it was such a fun fun experience, and it's. It's definitely worth it, man. It's cons are like a kid at a candy store, literally. It's literally like a kid at a candy store. Between buying stuff there, getting your autographs, talking with other horror fans, which is always awesome, and just the experience is there's nothing like it. Especially even more so when you have a table there. Yeah, and I gotta say, meeting celebs is something that still like makes me nervous every time. It's weird because it seems sometimes when I'm talking to them. It'll click into my mind like, holy shit, dude, you're talking to Freddy Krueger or you're talking to, you know, Jason or you're talking to whoever it is. And I just like freak out my mind, right? But you're trying to keep like a cool face. And it's it's really interesting. Same thing with uh, interviews. So on our podcast, we did a few uh, celebrity interviews since I've been on. And it's just, it's, uh, you don't want to like, you don't know what to say. You want to be kind of clever, but not ask the same questions every time that they've probably heard a zillion times. And it's a weird feeling, but yeah, it's awesome. Just very cool. It, it is. I've had a couple on here, um, but main, what I do with that though, is, and I let them know right up front for the most part is like, I, I'll say with any interviews that I do, I tell them, I said, I don't do too much research on you as far as like, I'll watch your work if you have work out there. Right. But I, was, I tell them, like, I don't do too much research. I don't do that because I'd rather you come on here and just make it a natural conversation. Whatever you want to talk about and discuss and bring up, we, you can. But other than that, because I don't, I don't want to be one of those who's like, um, like you see, you watch or you listen to some interviews and they're just asking like crazy questions. Like, oh, well, I'll, you, I'll just use, like last year, Steve got arrested for punching a kangaroo. Like just stupid <laughs> shit like that. <laughs> right. That would be funny. But you know what I mean? Just like, and it's just like, or they'll ask like an, aw- an awkward question. Like if it's, say if it's a female who had a nude scene, like how was it being naked in this movie or just, it's like if they bring it up, then maybe ask. But certain things you can't just because right. you don't want to look like a creep or sound like a creep. You might want right. to ask the question deep down, but you got to kind of like <laughs> you got to kind of like bury that. But yeah. they are fun to do. And then going back to the con thing, like I met um who was I joking around with all weekend? Friday the Thirteenth, Kincaid. I can't think, Ken Sagos. Oh, nice. He's freaking awesome, man. Like one thing, I I bought him some fried chicken. <laughs> I told him I was gonna, so I did. But I had him. I came on my podcast. This guy, he was so freaking nice too. Like I was, we went up to his table, we got his autograph, and my brother had already moved out to Colorado, so we got 
the script autographs for him. And my wife was like, hey, she was like, my brother-in-law moved out to Colorado. This is his favorite move. Like, Freddy's his thing. That part three is his favorite. She was like, "Would do you think you'd be able to talk to him on the phone for a few minutes when he goes on break? She was like, yeah, sure. So I called him up. I didn't even, I just called my brother and handed him the phone. He talked to him for like 10, 15 minutes, which sure. was just amazing. Yes. And then, like, he he knew me on a first-name basis that weekend. Anytime you see me walk past the table, hey, Aaron, come over here and hang out with me for a few minutes. <laughs> All right, hey, nice. come, come hang out. So me and him would be going back and forth, joking around as people are walking by, coming up, getting autographs, and just laughing. And just, he was such a nice guy. And at one point, I was like, hey, man, I was like, did you eat yet? He was like, nah. I was like, you know what? I was like, I'm going to go get you some fried chicken a little bit. And I got it for him. I, I think he ate, like, after, the because it was, like, later in the con. He right. ate, like, the con was over. But he brought, he's like, Aaron, that chicken was so fucking good yesterday. Nice. But such a nice, such a nice guy. And what meant so much to me, though, is like when I asked him if he'd come on the podcast and I told him, you know, explain to him what it was. He's like, yeah. He's like, give me about 20 minutes and I'll be over there. He's like, just come back and get me about 20 minutes. So I come back over there, leaves his table, comes and records me for maybe, maybe a half hour tops and then goes back to his table. But he took that time where he could be signing autographs and getting money to come just sit down and record with me. Stuff like that you won't forget. Stuff like that means a lot to you. And it's just like, it keeps you coming back. Like, it keeps you coming back for more, even if it's the same con. And to say that same con gets the same five or ten celebrities, but because the way they treat the fans really gets you to come back more and more and more and more, like every year. And maybe yeah. even get the autographs again. You're, I mean, you're going for the vendors and all that too, but it's just like versus like I've had experiences where you could tell the guys, the people didn't really want to be there. Right. It just kind of, it just rubs you the wrong way to where like, well, shit, I know not to give you my money again. <laughs> Or yeah, I don't have sure. to give you my money in general because you're acting this way, but yeah. that, that's very, very, very rare. Yeah, who who would you say your top three like best celebrities you've met as far as like being really cool with you and stuff at cons? Oh man, Felissa Rose is definitely number. She's one. This is yeah, longer, but she is so sweet. I've met her about at least five times like every time i go to scarecon when she's there i go to her and talk to her get an autograph give her a hug and just she's so freaking sweet and um funny thing was we we're going past her table a lot this year talking to her or whatever and she commented on my wife's hair she's like she have a real pretty wife she's like you, you, you better be good or i'm gonna take her from you and you already know where my mind went probably where your mind would go if a woman <laughs> your wife. i just started smiling right. and i was talking to my brother i was like yo I was like, I'm not saying something's going to happen, but if something goes down, because we're sharing a room, I was like, we might have to kick you out the room <laughs> and send you to Felissa Rose's room. He's like, I'm fine with that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, it's her. I don't, I'm going to have to say Ken Sagos too, because again, he took his time to sit with me for that time and just back and forth. Well, this is tough. Amanda Wiss is another one. I met her twice. I met her here in Albany, and then I met her again at Scaricon. We watched her movie called The Id. Okay. Did you ever see that? It's a really good movie. It's on Amazon Prime still, I believe. I believe it's on Tubi now, too. All right. Anyway, um, she did a drop for me. It's a video drop, though. You know, Welcome to Horror Research 30. At, uh, when she was here in Albany, and she was talking about the movie. She's like, I'll do that for you, but you have to tell people to watch the id. So I was like, easy. I did that for her. And then when we went to Scaricon, this was a couple years ago. We went to Scaricon. It was actually the same year that Ken Sagos was there. <clears throat> talked to see, met her there again. I think I got her autograph again. Talked to her, and she was talking about the it again. She remembered us. She's like, "Did you guys watch the movie yet?" I was like, "No, but we we're gonna watch it tonight, and I'll let you know how I feel about it tomorrow." I was like, As a "Matter of fact, we're gonna do a podcast on it, me and my brother." So we watched it that night. Talked to her the next night. Told her how we felt about it, and really, really enjoyed it. And I was like, "You know what? We're gonna do a podcast on this." And she was like, "How can I hear that?" And I was telling her, I gave her one of my business cards. And she was like. She wrote, she gave me her, like her personal email, which was just amazing. She's like, when it comes out, can you please send this to me? Right. And I did. And she was like, thank you guys so much. And that, that meant the world to me. Just little things like that are just so, I don't know. They're just amazing. But those are, the, those are my top three that I can think of right now. David Howard Thornton, I can tell you is another one. He was awesome. I met that most of that cast. Mm. It's hard to just say three, but I guess those are like the top yeah. ones. Who's yours? Uh, as far as like how nice they were. Uh, I would say Felisa Rose is definitely up there. So sweet. Just such mm -hmm. a nice person. Uh, Doug Jones, who played um, in Hocus Pocus, he's in Shape of Water, uh, Hellboy, Silver Surfer. He's been a bunch of stuff. 
Uh, mm -hmm. Super, super nice guy. I'm a big fan of Hocus Pocus, so it was cool to see uh, to see him in there. And uh, either Denise Crosby, who's uh, like, I, I got her to sign a Walking Dead thing because I'm a big fan. Mm -hmm. and she played Barbecue Mary in that, but of course she's again more famous for being um, in uh, oh my God, Pet Cemetery. Mm -hmm. As far as horror fans go, uh, yeah, there's just a bunch of people that. But most of them are nice, right? It's very rare yeah. that I've gotten. Some people are dicks. I gotta say, it's not you know, a hundred percent batting average here, but a thousand. But um, yeah, it's those are three that like come to mind first. I think when I think of nice horror celebrities, I've met really nice non horror celebrities. But uh, yeah. yeah, as far as horror goes, those are probably my top three right now. Yeah, uh, George Romero. Uh, so George Romero is a funny story. I was. A, Huge fan of George Romero. The Dawn of the Dead is my favorite horror film of all time. And he's going to Montreal Comic Con. That's that's where I was uh, raised and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm like, so I get there early because I want to go to his line, right? I know it's going to be huge. I mean, it's George Romero. Like, yeah. the guy popularized zombies. So I get there early. I get in line. I wait for a super long time to get into the con. Con doors open. I rush. I rush right to his table. And I'm not kidding you, not a single person was there for 15 or 20 minutes, which is crazy to me. Like George Romero, everyone's going to the people who were on Buffy or on like Supernatural or stuff like that. Zero people in line for George Romero. Mm -hmm. But the upside is I got to talk to George Romero for like 20 minutes uninterrupted. Right. It was so friggin' cool. Just the coolest guy. Uh, signed a bunch of my stuff. And yeah, that was such a thrill. Just a really down to earth, like awesome guy. That's yeah. That's what I love about these cons is when you get those really <laughs> down to earth people. Like I, I got to meet um, Kane Hodder, and he's yeah. my favorite. Jason, he's one of my favorite. I just like I like him a lot. And then you, right. if you watched his uh, "To Hell and Back," the um, yep. mm -hmm. documentary, and then I also read his. Well, I listened to the audiobook of his book, which I need to get his book. Great book. But um, I met him a few years ago in uh, what the heck was it? Monster Mania. And I have some <laughs> two funny things to say about him. So I'm waiting in line. Actually, I could take three. I'm waiting in line, waiting in line. And I'm my brother. This is the one that moved to, or no, he, he didn't move to Colorado at the time. He had his first son at the time. So he couldn't come out to Jersey that weekend. So I was texting him and I was like, hey, I was like, uh, he gave me some money, you know, to give him some autographs. I was like, hey, what do you want? You want a machete, whatever? He's like, yeah. He's like, get me a machete. <laughs> and I don't remember if he called me or, or texted me this because I was waiting for him to like respond. He was like, I don't know what I want him to say on it, though. I was like, Jason had no speaking roles. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, anyway, I get up to, you know, I get up to the line. I'm talking to Kane for a second. And Bam Margera walks in on the side, like, from out, comes in from outside. Right. He's like, can you please hang on one minute? He's like, I want to go over there and choke Bam. So, everybody was <laughs> taking pictures of that. He goes over there, take pictures of that. Or he chokes him, comes back, talks to me for a few minutes, signs my stuff, and then I'm on my way. Later on that day, I had to go use the bathroom, right? Yeah. Golden Stall used the bathroom. And a few minutes I'm in there and I hear Kane Hodder's voice. I hear, nice cock. I started dying. <laughs> <laughs> so, I was laughing my fucking ass off. Like, after I got out of the bathroom, the first thing I did was call my brother and told him. I was like, yo, what would you do if I, I asked him, I was like, what would you do if Kane Hodder says this to you? And he was like, I would say thank you or something. I was like, would you tell <laughs> people about it? He's like, yeah, of course. Right, that's <laughs> like, it's not, and again, not against people that are into all this. He's like, I'm, he's like, it's not gay because it's Kane Hodder. I was right. in tears though. But that's just right. stuff like, I like stuff like that though. Where, like with these people are having fun with the fans mm -hmm. and making you really feel welcome and just, Cause they, and it's, it feels good too when they thank us. Cause you're like, you're really thinking me. They're like, but yeah, if it wasn't for you guys, you know, cause you right. buy our movies, you buy our merch, you come to these kinds of see us, you know, we wouldn't be where we're at. But I also say to them, I'm like, if it wasn't for you guys, we wouldn't be here either. Cause we're here watching horror and all that because of you, all of you that just do this amazing work. And I try to, um, when I'm at cons too, I try to get at least one indie movie if I can, right. at least one. And I always get it signed. I remember the first time I did that, and they were like, "Wait, you want it signed?" I was like, "Yeah, <laughs> you're you were involved in the movie, right?" They're like, "Yeah." I was like, "It's your work, of course. Yeah, I want that signed. Please sign. Right. Please sign this." <laughs> but I I try I, I try to at least get one if I can if I see him. 
because sometimes I'm there like a child. Like the last these past couple of years, my wife wanted me to give her the money and have her hold it because again, I'm like a a kid. Like the first thing you see, you want to buy. And she's like, "You do this all the time, and you complain you couldn't get something later because you spent all your money." <laughs> so like, okay, just hold this for me. All right. I can't help it, man. <coughs> have no, my who, Brad Dorif. I met him. He wasn't necessarily mean, <laughs> but he had the attitude, like the look, and just the way he was coming up, like he didn't want to be there. It's funny. Um, we uh, I don't know if you listened to our last podcast yet, uh, the one that just dropped yesterday, but we had that exact conversation about bad dirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's common across. Uh, but he he was one like I was getting his autograph. This was the same time I met Keen. I was getting his autograph for my brother. And but he's someone I would get his autograph for because he wasn't like an asshole or mean, but he just was like off putting. I guess like I don't really want to be here type of deal. Right. But it, I guess it happens. And then right next to him, I cannot remember his name, but you know the guy who played Andy, so fucking nice. Oh and yeah. Nobody, <laughs> nobody was in his line. Like I felt bad. <laughs> I went and got his autograph, and then I think I went and got back over there, got his autograph for my brother. Be just because his, his well, he wanted there was like a few autographs he wanted, but he's like, if I can't get these, you know, get these. Danielle Harris was there, but her line was just way too long. I was like, I'm not waiting eight hours because I we had to go back home that night. Because we, if we were staying the weekend, it would have been different. We were going back right. home. I was like, I'm not waiting, it's a four hour drive. I'm not waiting <laughs> double that to get somebody's autograph, right? That and I would love, I would have loved to get her autograph. No offense to her, but like. <clears throat> There's certain people, like if it was Kane Hodder, that's like my favorite, you know, it's like my favorite, one of my favorite horror icons that I would try, you know, I'd have to, but right. certain people, I'm just like, I can't just, I can't do it for everybody. But what, what's the longest you waited for an autograph? Me? Honestly, I don't know. Not, not super long because this same con and um, Monster Mania, my wife actually volunteered the waiting line for Robert England. Yeah, we didn't, up get, we didn't end up getting his autograph, but she waited in line literally from like maybe an hour after we got there till when we were getting ready to leave. Wow. And what we did was like, if she had to use the bathroom, she would just because me and my brother were staying together, so she would just call one of us or text one of us, hey, or if right. she was hungry, anything you need, just let us know because she let us walk around and sign, which she was fine with. She was perfectly fine with that. We'd go check up on her, hang out with her here and there. But um, yeah, that she was probably in that line for like eight to ten hours. And Jeez. we didn't like we get like we got upstairs, two rooms away, and they were like, "Listen, they're like everybody that's in this room, we could take your tickets or whatever, you know, so you guys are guaranteed to get his autograph tomorrow." But we couldn't stay. My brother, I think his son was his son was still young, and he had to get back home because his wife had to work the next day. So we couldn't stay. Like, had if if he could have stayed, we would have stayed that weekend and got his autograph. And this one girl started crying. And they let her get the autograph. So as we're leaving, I was making jokes about it. I was, like, I was looking at my brother. I was like, oh, Henry, I was like you should have just started crying. You could probably right. get, <laughs> got his autograph. And he, the thing, the funny, well, not funny, but the crazy thing was, is like he came to Albany a couple of years ago. And this is the same year my brother moved. To, he came to Albany a couple of years ago in April. I believe two years ago now, maybe three. And that February of that same year, my brother and his family moved out to Colorado. So he missed it. And that's, again, Freddie's like his favorite slasher. He was pissed. Like his wife was telling us about it when we were going over there to hang out. Like once he seen that they were coming, you know, that they were coming out and all this stuff. And she was like, he was acting like a child. Like he was just grown. He's been having a temper tantrum since. <laughs> From the day he found out all the way up till they moved. He's been slamming. They're just mad. And I'm just like, I get it. So we got him his, we got his autograph for him. We got one of the gloves signed. And then like my wife, nice. she's creative. I'm not. She made him like a shadow box with it. And he freaking loved that. I think he hung it up somewhere. That's awesome, man. Yeah, it's, it, it's tough, like, to wait. I, I waited three hours for Norman Reedus. That's probably the longest I've waited. Mm -hmm. But I'm such a huge Walking Dead fan. that, And I have a whole, like, poster. That I think I have 12 signatures on it now. And I figured, like, an original cast member is one I had to get, you know? So yeah, I, I waited. And he was super nice, so that was awesome. But, uh, yeah, it's tough to wait. Because you think of all the other stuff that you're missing out on, right, mm -hmm. when you're waiting in that line, so. It is. It is. It really is. Like I'm, and see with me too. I'm an impatient person, but I, I feel like if it's something that I'm there all weekend for, I'd probably go back and forth. You know what I mean? Like, right. Usually, what I try to do now too is like Friday at a con. At a, that'll be my day. I'll try to get some, at least half the autographs knocked out, 
then the, the rest of the weekend I don't have to worry. If if not all of them, at least half of them, that I don't have to worry as much the rest of the weekend. And I know Saturdays are usually like the busy. Just from going to them, you know Saturdays like the busiest days as far as foot traffic because people right. they're off of work or whatever. Fridays like the easiest day to get them, and sometimes Sundays if the people are still there. But it's I have so much freaking fun at them things, man. I swear, <laughs> it's yeah. it's it's so crazy because you never like. I didn't know about cons for years, and then when I finally found out, it's you're hooked. I'm like, holy shit! I get to meet these people, talk to these people, sit with them, and now have a drink with them with the VIP things, be on a panel with them. Like I let my brother do last year. He did the Terrifier panel, and he did the uh, Sleepaway Camp panel. And the cool thing about the Terrifier panel is where they announced that Felissa Rose was going to be in the movie. Okay, cool. So that was freaking awesome. We found actually we found out the Friday night before at the VIP party. She told us. And then that's when they like announced to whoever was at the thing, which I missed that because I was on a different panel. But I just thought that was freaking awesome. I was like, that's so cool that they're announcing this here at this con right. and be in this movie. And what did you think about the Terrifier movie? Speaking of that. I, I like the Terrifier movie. Uh, definitely has some memorable kills, <laughs> uh, particularly the one that the, uh, the girl is upside down. I mean, I think everyone yes. knows that one <laughs> by that point. Uh, I'm excited to see what they're going to do with the second one. Um, I, did they ever set a release date yet? I don't think so. Right? No, I don't think so. I th- I want to say they wanted it out around this October ish, but again, with this whole crap going right. on, it's probably going to be pushed back further. But I'm excited for it. And like the the cool thing about that con too was everybody that was at that con from that I got like most of the cast to sign to sign a. Uh, Actually, I got some, for some of them. I got like an eight by ten. I think for like two of them, and then my wife got me a poster. So then went and got like everybody to sign the poster. Right. But um, the they showed me and my brother the the movie art, like the movie art poster for okay. it. It was, it was so fucking cool. <laughs> but the, yeah. Matter of fact, it was Damien. He was like, "Hey, come here real quick." Like, right. oh, this is gonna be the poster. I was like, "That's so fucking awesome." It's just. Right. Again, if you're a horror fan and you can make it to a con, you can afford it. When they come back mm-hmm. up, you have to go. It's such an experience. And it's so different from like a Comic Con because yeah. I see this all the time. I feel you've been to Comic Cons before, right? Uh, yeah, I've been in, in Canada, but yeah. Yeah, but same feeling. Like I, I feel with a horror convention, literally everybody that's at that convention wants to be there. I feel with. A Comic Con, it's more of not that everybody doesn't want to be there. I feel it's more of like a boyfriend or a girlfriend is bringing, you know, is dragging the other one there, or, or they're going because of their children are going. They don't really want to be. They're, they're there for more support than anything else. But I feel like with a horror convention, from the little kids on to the eighty-year-old adults, really want to be there because they're really into that genre. And it's like it's a different. Not that Comic Con's a bad energy because it's not. I don't want to say that, but it's just a different energy. Like. I don't even want to say more welcoming. It's just different. Yeah, like, well, it's, it's it's a mix of different, uh, like, you'll see different popular, like, things, right? You'll mm-hmm. see the uh, kind of co- comic crew, like, actually comic books. Then you'll get the, uh, you know, like, Doctor Who crew and then the That's Harry true. Potter crew. And then you, it just, you know, it's, it's not the same because, you know, you kind of have to seek out people that are within kind of your lane. Yeah. Uh, and usually the way is that is by going to either... Uh, a table that has a you know horror celebrity or uh, in the kind of indie lane that has horror people and mm-hmm. actually it's funny because like I said I have uh, 12 signatures on a Walking Dead poster and I got them all in person now every time there's a con in either Montreal or, or Ottawa which is kind of the two places I tend to go to more because of, of where I live if there's a Walking Dead celebrity I'll go in line to get my poster signed and it's always the same people so I recognize people from previous years because it's always the same, like, you know, 10, 20 people that I see every single year at the, in those lines. Right. And it's hilarious to see, uh, to see that and to kind of talk about stuff. And that's cool. With, now with the walking dead, do you just get like the main cast or do you, will you get like a character that's been in the episode for like one or two episodes too, or. Uh, mainly I'll get someone who's at least been there like a few episodes. Okay. Uh, you know, I won't get like a cameo. But I, with Denise Crosby, so she played Barbecue Mary. And when I got her autograph, she had only appeared for like a minute in the season finale of, I think it was season four. Mm-hmm. And because I didn't know how big of a role she would have, I assumed a big one. It's fucking Denise Crosby. 
so I got my I got her autograph on my poster, and she dies like the first episode of season five. <laughs> so uh, you know, in that case, I have someone who wasn't there on it, but because it's her, I don't really mind. And she was so cool, just such a nice person. She was telling me that of all the sets she's been on, that was by far her favorite one. She wow. was the most welcoming and the nicest people in the world. And the guy who played Rick, uh, Andy Lincoln, apparently is the nicest celebrity on the planet, according to her. Just the most welcoming, the nicest guy ever. And she's telling me stories about it, and it was awesome. So. That's that's so cool. That's so freaking cool. I, lo- I love when you get to sit down and listen to the celebrities go back and forth, just telling stories about just how it was on the set and the cast. I'm just like, that's... You're, it's... <laughs> It's like a bedtime story almost. You're just, sick, <laughs> just smiling, happy. Probably looking yeah. like a fool smiling, but I, I'm just like, this is so cool. Like, I, 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 that's pretty much what I say to them. Like, this is so cool. This is so awesome. I, I know there's, I'm not like, I don't really get like starstruck, but there's times I just don't know what to say, especially when they're like just telling right. cool things like that. I'm just like, holy shit, you're actually telling me this. Yeah. Some people are better at like starting conversations and kind of talking to you, whereas some of them, it's really just a sign here, do this, and thank you, and you're off, mm-hmm. right? And it's, there's more of an awkward vibe and it's, I don't know, since they don't mean to be mean or anything, I guess they're just kind of, uh, yeah. you know, shy or introverted or anything like that, uh, but they're there to sign stuff. So, I mean, it is what it is. It's very rare I get someone who's actually mean. Like, I've, oh, I've yeah. had a few. The unders, I can say I've had a few, which is weird to me because if I'm meeting you at a con, that's kind of your job is to be nice to me <laughs> and to yeah, sign my yeah. item. If I see you at a restaurant, I totally get it. You have a right to be a dick, but... At a con, like, come on, what the hell are you doing? I mean, that's uh, makes no sense to me. I had someone, I was walking with my brothers to, I don't know if we were going to the, where we were going, but the guy had just, he was just walking down the hall. My brother's like, hey, how you doing? And he was like, hey, if you want to talk to me, come to my table and pay $80 <laughs> for an autograph. I'm yeah. like, fuck you. <laughs> I was like, yeah. and, I, and the movie, it was, I'll just say this, it was one of the guys from Scream. I was, I was, I was just going to say, it's probably the guy who plays the, it goes face in the first one. I'm, tr- I'm blanking on his name right now. Ulrich Screech. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, I was thinking of the other one. And um, the other one, Matthew Lillard. <laughs> Matthew Lillard. I've heard that of Matthew Lillard. So Both of both of them were assholes. But then, I, yeah, but then I hear how people are talking about how, they're, how, how the good they are with kids and shit. Like when they, but I feel, is it, are they good with kids just when you go to their table and get right. autographed? As a matter of fact, I think it was on your show I heard one of them was even a dickhead at like the VIP thing. Yeah, I think it was Matthew Lillard, yeah. And I'm just like, how do you just just from that alone? Like, I do like Scream. I don't love Scream. I never did. I do like Scream, but I wouldn't I wouldn't pay 80. And I don't even if they weren't like that, I don't feel to me. I don't feel their autographs are worth 80 bucks a piece. Right. It was like 80 bucks. for. I think it was 80 bucks for an autograph and a picture, maybe 60 or 70 for the autograph. I don't I don't feel that they put they did, made a big impact in horror for me for me to pay that much money to right. get their autographs. Some people may think different, but yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's different for everyone, right? Like if you're really into a movie, then that autograph yeah. for you is worth more. Like for me, uh, Night of Living Dead, the remake, the Tom Savini version. If I meet someone from that, I'll pay like pretty much anything to get their signature because yeah. that movie means a lot to me. But I understand it doesn't mean a lot to other people, so I get it. You know, it's uh, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll take it a step further. If they if their autographs were twenty bucks a piece, I wouldn't get it. Just be, just because. <laughs> The type of, yeah. I don't, I look at it like people work hard for their money. And mm-hmm. I mean, at the same time, someone's just saying hi to you in the hallway. Hey, how you doing? Hey, I'm doing good. How, how you, know, you having fun? Right. Because there's been plenty of times where I've walked past celebrities and said hi to them and they'll stop and talk to you. Right. Uh, who is his, what's his name? The guy who played Malachi in um, Children of the Corn. Met him a couple years back. Mm-hmm. And he would just, I think he walked by my table or something. I was like, hey, how you doing? Talk to him. How's it going? Hey, is it cool if I take a picture with you? Yeah, sure. Come on. Just right. stuff like that. I understand because they, you know, they want you to get the autograph, this, that, right. third, and pay. I get that. But still, it's just like you're at a convention. Be nice. That's how you draw people to not only want to watch your movies more, see what else you're doing, but that's how you're going to get people to want to spend money at your table is just being nice. Right. I can't tell no. you how many times that I've been to going to these cons and I've like say I get say I get autograph for a movie I really enjoy and say whoever I'm with they like it but they don't like it to that extent. But the person will still talk to them, they'll still, hey, you want a picture too? I didn't get it hey that's fine. You can still take a picture. Sid Sid uh Sid Haig was someone like that. I'm I still kick myself I'm so stupid I didn't get his autograph. But it's at, actually, the time, uh, at the time I didn't watch um 
what the hell is the Rob Zombie movie that's so damn popular now or then? Uh, well, there's there's just th- the trilogy, you know, uh, House. Uh, How then was the Halloween the Halloween series, which I guess is uh, or Thirty One or no, it was um House of a Thousand Corpses. Oh, okay, it was House. Okay, yeah, but, yeah. Okay. I didn't I didn't watch those movies at the time, so I didn't get his autograph. But he was so mm-hmm. like he he talked to us. I can't. I think I took a picture of him. Maybe not with him. I don't remember. But um, he was like talking to us. My friends got their autograph. Got his autograph. My brother and my one friend. And he went like right without even asking. He went right in the character. He's like, you can record if you want, right? Which was just fucking awesome. Such yeah. a nice guy. And his autograph was only like ten or twenty bucks. I should have just got it, but I just didn't. And now I'm really kicking myself. Yeah, Sid Haig is actually the first horse celebrity I've ever met. Mm-hmm. Uh, the very first con I ever went to was a Montreal Comic Con, and I was in line. I didn't know how the con thing worked at all. Like I didn't know what to expect, and I'm in line to get into the building. And suddenly, out of nowhere, Sid Haig walks right past me, looking confused as hell. Like, he's just, like, looking around, kind of completely lost. So I'm like, uh, hey, I'm a big fan. He's like, hey, do you know where the hell we're going? And, like, super nice. So I, I showed him where he had to go to get into the con. Mm-hmm. And then I went to him, and it was the first ever horror autograph I ever got. That's uh, unless you count The Undertaker as <laughs> the pro wrestler, which is kind of dive up like delving into horror but outside of that Sid Haig was the first actual horror celebrity I met and he was super nice just I'm so happy I got to meet him I was a big fan of House of a Thousand Corpses so mm-hmm. uh, I, yeah after I watched it I was like holy shit this dude yeah, is great fucking movies but it's, it's just again he was such a, a great great person great soul and everything and I, that's one again that's another thing I gotta get better at is getting certain celebrities the older ones if you're a fan of yeah. them Get it, get it while you can. Here's here's something crazy. I believe was it Toby Hooper? I think it was him. And um, I know it was Richard Broker from Friday the Thirteenth Part Three. No lie, man. A week or two before the con, both of those gentlemen passed away. A week or two before a con, where me and my brother were going to, and I was uh, <clears throat> I was gonna get both of their autographs, especially Richard's because I'm a huge Jason fan. And then same with you know because I like the Texas, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Right. And when they, I was just like, this just this just sucks. I was like, I was like, if celebrities keep dying like a week or two before we go to these cons, we're gonna they're gonna start looking at us as guilty <laughs> as guilty yeah, subjects. Man. Just making a joke of it, but it's just like it's just so crazy how that happens. And now one person I want to meet bad is um Tom Savini. He was at a con here. I didn't get his autograph at the time when he was here. I don't I don't remember why. I don't know if it was because I didn't have the money or what the case may be. Then he was supposed to be at Scarecon like two times when I was going to go there, but he had to cancel for something. I'm just like, shit. But he's also one of those people who people say he's not very friendly, so to speak, I guess. Yeah, he's um, – so he meant a lot to me because Night of the Living Dead, like his version, is the one that got me into horror. Mm-hmm. And Dawn of the Dead's my favorite horror film. So when I got the chance to meet him, I was really, like, excited about it. And he, it's not that he was mean. He was just kind of like he didn't know what to t- tell you, you know? Yeah. So, He's giving one word answers to any question I was asking. Uh, he did eventually like open up a little bit because there was no one else in line. I got to talk to him a little bit, mm-hmm. but I can see how people would think that he's kind of standoffish or a, yeah. a bit of a dick, but he, he was cool. Just not like the nicest person I've met. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. There was just nothing wrong with that. He does some here. Fucking awesome work. <laughs> awesome work. That's yeah. why I just want to meet him, grab a picture with something from Friday the 13th and get that signed. That's, one of my goals. So hopefully I can meet him soon. One of these days. And hopefully this fucking thing goes, goes away soon. I don't know what yeah. to help it. I don't know if it's people staying inside. If that's the case, people just fucking stay inside. It's not really that hard. <laughs> yeah. It's It's great. I, I haven't been outside in almost two weeks now. <laughs> Sorry. Really? Oh, no, you're good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I've, I haven't been outside in almost two weeks now. Um, they asked us to stay inside for two weeks at work because people were positive in my building. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm kind of looking forward to really like going outside and doing stuff. I know probably won't be for a while. I don't think like I could actually go outside soon, at least to like take a walk or something. But yeah. so I can't wait to like rejoin society and just do stuff. But who knows? this is going to change everything. Like the yeah. way we live and the way we do stuff. It's crazy. Hopefully for the better though. Like I hope people really learn from this. It just, yeah. I mean, I know it's more than just washing your hands and all that, but if that's what it takes, hopefully, because it, it's it's crazy seeing grown ass men walking out of the men's room, not wa- like you just took a dunk, oh, yeah. not gonna wash your hands, <laughs> right. you want to eat a sandwich, 
Wash your fucking hands. I yeah, mean, if you don't care about your own health, at the very least, care about someone else's because then you're going to touch the door, you're going to touch this, and then other people have to open the door. It's ridiculous, man. Yeah, and one thing that concerns me, so here are the three types of vacations I take. I go to Disney, which is waiting in line for rides. I go to Halloween Horror Nights, which is waiting in line for haunted houses. And I go to cons, which is waiting in line for celebrities. Mm-hmm. So those are three things that you're not going to be able to do like the same way anymore. And it's, I don't know how that's going to change everything. It's going to be weird. It's going to be, that's what, it's interesting. I know. And it's going to be interesting. And you, you know, what's funny is a few weeks ago, I'll say a month or two before this even happened, I think, or maybe when it happened in China before it hit here, I was talking about right. one of my friends, one of my coworkers, one of my friends. And I was like, you know, what? I was like, you know what, man? I was like, you know what this world really needs is for the world to literally, I was like, at least the U.S., but I was like, the world in general, if, if everybody just stayed home for like a month so the world could right. like reset some, mm-hmm. and then a few weeks later, boom, look what's going on. Like, right. it just, I, was like I was like, seriously, just imagine if everybody stayed mm-hmm. home. I, I, I didn't even say for a month. I said just for like a week or two weeks. I said just imagine if everybody stayed home. I might even say for a day. But everybody around the world stayed home. Like, literally, everyone stayed home, didn't go out and get gas, didn't start their cars up, did nothing as far as that goes. That would do a lot. I was like, now just imagine if it was for a week or two or whatever the case may be. And now a lot of people are being forced to stay home and do this. Right. And, like, I know China, China was shut down. Like, they shut down all their factories and everything. They're saying, like, the skies are clearer there. Like, it's just like, right. that's what this needs. Yeah. yeah. Shit, the world might be telling us, like, look, you guys keep fucking it up, fucking up, fucking right. up. I'm going to be here when you guys are gone. I was here before the dinosaurs. I'm going to be here yeah. after you dumb humans that are fucking up everything worse than anything ever that was ever here on Earth. Yeah. And it's just, oh, man. But it, it, it is going to, I wonder how it's going to change things. I'm hoping it's going to change things for the better as far as, I don't know, like, I guess us taking better care of the Earth, taking better care of ourselves and each other and treating each other a lot better. Maybe this will make people miss each other. Like, oh, you know what? That beef you had, it's, it's yeah. stupid. But we'll see. <laughs> I, I think it's going to change things in the same way 9-11 changed things. It's just people are going to think twice about doing certain things and they're going to change kind of rules in different ways. And it's going to be interesting to see the it fallback and of I, all this. See, the thing, though, I hope it doesn't change things as far as, like, racism goes because I've heard people people are beating yeah, no. Asians for no reason. I'm like, that that's just stupid. People, yeah, people are so always stupid. find a bit way to be racist, right? Yeah. I'm like, come and on. 9-11 was the same way, right? So It was it was horrible, and it's still yeah. going on with 9-11, and it's, it's, it's crazy, yo, because it's, like, it's one of those things, like, with 9-11, I'll say for, like, a couple, a day or two, people are being nice and all this stuff. Like, right. everybody around, you know, I don't know how it was up there, but like, everybody around here being nice and all that, that lasted like a week. And then everybody's back to right. bullshit. So I'm like, once this is over with, are we going to just, you know, for a week, everybody's going to pretend to care. And then after that, you're back to the bullshit until something else crazy happens, say 20 years down the road or sooner or whenever. whenever. Hopefully people are just like, you know what, let's, let's just change. Let's treat each other better. Let's do better. And we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. For man. sure. And here I was, like, this whole time I've been waiting for a zombie apocalypse. But at least zombies you can see coming. Yeah. You know, this is just, like, it's just crazy. Like, you and can't I, see what's coming. And with us horror fans, we've been preparing for this. It's like, why do you watch yeah. it? I'm preparing. Just, just wait. You'll thank me. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. But uh, this, you know, this is a villain you can't see. And it's just, like, it's not fair. Yeah. Come on. I, I don't know what to do with this one. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. It's like. like, like, been, us, like you guys have been watching these horror movies about. This kind of thing, but yeah, but we're talking about fighting zombies and like an actual being. We got exactly. you. zombies stab, stab them in the head. Everything else, a virus, I, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> yeah, I, I just don't get why people aren't listening and staying home. Like this is this is it. This is your way to save the world is to sit home on your couch and watch movies. Like that's what you need to do. That's crazy. That that's yeah. like the I mean, easiest yeah. thing ever. It it really it really is it really is man it's just sad I, I feel like I mean minus the finances because that I get if you're going out yeah you're, that's but, a big thing, I yeah. get that I respect that and I that's one thing I feel I was discussing this the other day and people I know that are gonna be listening to this episode in the future this isn't a political podcast but so what this is what you get when you get in horror you get a little you get a little everything <laughs> but I feel like 
with here with the U.S., I wish that instead of spending all these billions and trillions of dollars on stupid shit, tearing up other countries and weapons, if you did something to help build this country up and then just had like an emergency funding for like, for something like this, just imagine that emergency funding, just billions of dollars, trillions. Hey, look, we need everybody to stay inside. Here's, you know, here's a, so here's money. So you guys will be covered for, you know, however long this takes. Cause the, it's, it, people will say it's impossible. It's a lot harder than that. But I'm like, if they can take, how can they make it right to make these weapons, say spend a trillion dollars on weapons, go tear something up, but they can't spend a trillion dollars on something to heal people. How could, how does that make sense? Where do you get that money? No, exactly. It's uh, it just sucks. That it's affecting so many people and it is, like, yeah. losing their jobs and stuff. It's terrible. Like that, I feel so bad for people who are like losing their jobs and unsure for their families. And mm-hmm. it's, it's crazy. It's a crazy time. And it's, uh, and it's like, yeah. it's affecting, like I, I had somebody on, um, what's today? Today's Saturday, right? So Friday, one o'clock in the morning, Friday from Australia. Cause our time <laughs> difference is nine hours. Right. And it's affecting people like way out at the whole world. Like literally the yeah. whole world. Usually the when you see world. something crazy going on, like I'll give, 9-11 was just, I mean, it affected the United, it, affected, it was an impact everywhere, but it was mainly the U.S. and in New York City that really, right. really, really affected. And even in horror movies, like, you don't really see it the whole world. Like, you see it, you see it in the city. You see it, like, in one city or one town where some crazy shit's going on. <clears throat> but this is, like, everywhere. Literally everywhere. And people are just, I don't know. I <laughs> I don't know what yeah. to do, but stay home and record my podcast and watch horror movies and watch horror movies. That's exactly yeah. yeah. That's uh, that's what I do. I mean, I, I work from home now, but uh, other than that, when I'm done working, I just put on some horror movies, play some video games, and I'm yeah, I'm good. And yeah, it's one of those. Like, I understand again if you have to go out to work, I get it. And like here, you we could still go out if you have to work, you, or if you have to go to the grocery store, or whatever the case may be. If you want to go for a walk, you can still do that, which is fine. The parks are closed. If you want to walk around your neighborhood. You don't right. do it in groups. You know, if you're doing it with your household, I guess that's one thing, but you don't call up your friends. Like my brother was saying the other day, he was going somewhere. He was going to work. And he said, he's seen people like playing basketball and stuff and just, but that, that's not social distancing. That's the complete opposite of social distancing. Right, exactly. And I'm like, you guys, and I'm sure you've seen these dumbass challenges, people licking toilet seats and shit. Sure. Well, you know what? You know what's good? Well, it's not good, but those people are getting charged with, I think it's uh, terrorism. I think is what the charge that they're getting. Good. So it's it's like it's karma for these people, you know. Yeah. These, 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 they think it's funny. They do it for TikTok or whatever the fuck they're doing uh, the, okay. the kids these days, and they're getting charged with terrorism. So that's going to be a hard lesson, and hopefully that will make people stop doing stupid shit like that. But yeah, like um, they do what you're saying with that the toilet seat licking, and then I was I just seen this the other day on Facebook. People are um, teens are pranking people by like coughing on them or coughing by them. Yeah. That's gonna get somebody hurt or killed because yeah. people don't play games like that. And I put myself into a situation. Well, I think of it as like just imagine like a family, like a father, a mother, and their kids out because they have to be out, or a, or a father and their kids, a mother and their kids, and it's a place where you can open carry. They have a gun right. on. Them. And you're over there coughing on their kids, or they're gonna kill you because you're yep. putting the kids at risk. You're putting their kids' lives at risk, even if it's a prank. That's not. There's certain things you don't do, which I get pranking and all that. Pranking is cool to an extent, but there's just certain shit you don't do just for clicks, just for likes. And I also I look at it one of two ways. I look at it as not only getting beat up or killed, but then I look at it back into my childhood or my teenagers. We didn't have the social media like that, but I'm just thinking I don't think we'd be doing this dumbass shit because if the world can see it, your parents can see it. And my mother right. would knock me across as soon as I got home. <laughs> oh, you think it's funny to cough on people, huh? <laughs> yeah. That's no, I did. So it's just like, what, what? It's so fucking stupid. It's really yeah. fucking stupid. And it's. We, we, yeah, we grew up in a different time, though. Like, it's crazy. Like, I think about my childhood versus, like, my nephew's and niece's childhoods. Mm-hmm. Like, my mom was basically like, okay, go out, you know, oh, uh, hey, mom, there's this super scary looking building in the forest my friends and i are going to go check it out okay be back by eight you know that was, yeah. that was the extent of my mom now they're sending him in with cell phones they gotta ping them they gotta check in it's like holy yeah. shit like what a different world it's it's so different i mean i know it's crazier now but still though it's just like a lot of kids don't have the common sense that we had growing up they don't no, exactly. they don't even get to get it because it's if you see them outside they're usually trapped with one of these in their hands all right 
staring at this, and I'm just like, look, just observe the world. There's more to do than your phone and games, which I get because it's it's cra- like I said, it is crazier now. Okay. But there's still there's just some stupid stupid shit that goes on, like the coughing on people. Looking, why would you look a toilet seat? The, like, what kind of a challenge is that? And then even yeah, even without this, licking a toilet seat is stupid. <laughs> like yeah, like who whose brilliant idea was that? And it, it's just sad, like. The toilet seat thing, the, I guess you can say it's kind of funny. It's kind of a karma thing. One of the people actually ended up getting sick because of that. Like, yeah, yeah, I saw that. I was because I'm like, so this, like, how do you go, again, you're a teenager. You go home to your mom, mama, I don't feel that. I feel really sick. And she sees the video. She's like, well, you, you stupid ass wouldn't be sick if you were looking at fucking toilet seats. Right. <laughs> Why? <laughs> but that, I wouldn't even look at my own toilet seat at home and say if I was the only one that used it, let alone looking right, at it. Exactly. Toilet seat. There's, Remember the challenge last year? People were like, taking the tops off the oh, ice cream and looking at And the Tide Pods, remember that? Like oh two, two years ago? It's, uh, See, like yeah. certain challenges I thought were cool. Like the cinnamon challenge, I thought that was funny. That's not... Uh, you, that, that can kill you too, though. Like I've heard stories. Uh, really? Oh, yeah, because it can, it can choke you, right? Cinnamon okay. ab- absorbs all the moisture. So it's just... People are idiots, but yeah, that's something I, w- I probably would have done as a kid. <laughs> the cinnamon not, challenge. Yeah, that's not as bad. But then I see there was that challenge. There was the one for AOS or the ice bucket challenge. Cool. Yeah, see that that was more of a like you know people are donating and stuff. So that was a better one. Yeah. And then they had the dumbass one with um. I don't know if you've seen this. People are setting themselves on fire. They're pouring like. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't know what the fuck they're pouring on their hands or whatever, and then setting us. I'm like, why would you do that? Yeah. And then, yeah. Or remember planking when that was a thing? Like people are planking everywhere and make trying to up their game and up their yeah. game and it's just. But I I I did plank, but it was like somewhere where I'm not going to get hurt. Like yeah, right, exactly. It's not the top of a skyscraper. Like yeah, fuck that. Yeah, I'm scared of heights as it is. I'm not doing that. <laughs> I, that's one. way. I mean, obviously, everybody wants to. You know, when you do eventually die, you probably want to go peacefully in your sleep, but. Right. However, I do go out. I don't want to go out doing something I know I'm supposed to be doing. <laughs> like something real, real, real dumb. Like he, there's a 75 percent chance you're gonna die if you do this. You shouldn't do it. I'm right. gonna, like, he survived. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. Oh man. Yeah. But uh, what, what do you got going on for the rest of the day? You watch, what movie do you plan on watching? Uh, I'm still going into my um, Stuart Gordon thing, trying to set up for my next podcast. So I watched Castle Freak, Stuck, The Pit and the Pendulum, and Reanimator. Mm-hmm. And now tonight, I'm probably going to watch King of the Ants. And hopefully, if I have time, um, Edmund. So those okay. are the two I'm planning to watch. And I'm also watching that uh, Tiger thing that uh, everyone's talking about. That was a Tiger King on Netflix, yeah. which is like that dude with the cats. Uh, my wife and I are watching that together because it's fucking ridiculous. Just That's- what a crazy story. <laughs> It's funny you say that because I started. That's why I fell asleep too earlier, I, <laughs> and not even because it was boring, just because I was laying down. <laughs> like, right. I could watch it damn near anything. It can be something I'm really, really into. I'm laying down, comfortable. That's where I make that mistake, and just next thing you know, your eyes are closed. You wake up, you're in episode six or something. Like, what the right, hell? right. What the hell? <laughs> I thought he was patting a tiger. Last time I said he was patting a tiger. <laughs> right. So I got to start that over. But um. I guess we can wrap this one up, though, man. I appreciate yeah. you coming on. I had a great no, time. It's been a pleasure, man. I, I'm super happy I could be on and we can chat more. Uh, yeah, anytime, man. It's a lot of fun, and uh, yeah, I love listening to your stuff, so it's, it's an honor. Likewise, man. I love listening to your stuff. I'm honored to have you on, but I'll definitely get you on again. And you can go ahead. Anything you want to plug, go right ahead, man. Yeah, basically just uh, check out my podcast, The Horror Squad Podcast. Uh, we put out an episode every week, usually on Friday. Uh, you can get it pretty much anywhere, your uh, you know, podcasting services. And we just got some really great people who listen to it, and we're very appreciative of every single one of them. Uh, the last episode we did, we, we dropped yesterday, is The Hunt, uh, which we had very strong thoughts about, I got to say. We talked a good half an hour about that film. And the next episode is a Stuart Gordon uh, tribute show. Uh, he passed away last week, and we're just going to go through his filmography and – go through it and talk about all the stuff he's done. So it's a, uh, it's going to be an awesome thing. And, uh, check out my other, uh, podcaster, uh, squad mates there. We got Joe, uh, check him out on Joe's house of horror. His great group on Facebook. We got Sam. She's known for a YouTube channel called Halloween happy, which is a fantastic YouTube show where she just lives Halloween every single day. And 
man, I love watching her stuff because it really puts me in a good mood. And she is awesome. Like uh, having met her now and having talked to her for years, she is just an awesome person. And finally, Todd, Todd All Things Horror on YouTube. He does some indie films from here and there. He's got someone's plan. Uh, we actually like, he sent me some of the scripts and I helped him kind of uh, iron them out and uh, check out for that. He's a great dude as well. So I yeah, gotta, I got to check out his YouTube. I've checked out Sam's before. She's awesome. Checked out Joe's stuff before his page and all that. He's awesome. So I got to check out Todd's, his YouTube channel. I definitely. Yeah. And, and mine's uh, called flipping the nerd. Uh, I haven't been putting out stuff in the last two, three months right now. I will at some point, put out some more stuff but if you want to see what halloween horror nights is like or mickey's not so scary halloween party or mm -hmm. you want to check out i so every room every room in my house is themed to something and i've been starting to put out videos of what they look like so i have a haunted mansion room a, a stephen king room uh, actually right now i'm recording in my the office themed office uh, i have a horror room but it's not in my house <laughs> which is interesting and I can't get to it because of the stupid virus, which is oh, a okay. bummer because I wanted to record in there, but it is what it is. Uh, so I'll, I'll do a, a tour of that soon as well. So just check it out. Flipping the Nerd. And that's my social media on, on everything, uh, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter, all that stuff. That's so – that's – I got to – now I got to go watch your videos again too. That's <laughs> theme for every room. That's real freaking cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's fun. So you should check out at least my Haunted Mansion room. That's the one I have. I did last, and it was uh, it was fun. I really love that room. It's uh, great to do. I actually have to do an update because I bought a bunch of stuff since then. But uh, yeah, it's fun. And I, I should, I'm finishing my Stephen King room right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I just need a lot of frames because. Uh, so my wife buys these prints that have, uh, it's the art cover from each of these books signed mm -hmm. by the person who originally did the art of each of those covers. That's so and we have like forty of them. And I need frames for each of them, so I'm like kind of waiting for that. And now I can't buy frames because I can't go out. So. <laughs> but eventually, I'll do a, a tour of that room as well. It's gonna be awesome. That's that's so freaking cool, man. But again, thanks for coming on. Oh, Every, thank you, everybody who listened to my podcast. Go check out the Horror Squad podcast. They're one of my favorite horror podcasts. Definitely, you guys will love it. Um, I've got another podcast I got for you guys to check out. I got two more that off the top of my head. Um, Sinister Parlor podcast. I've had her on plenty of times. I actually showed her the podcasting ropes. Awesome, awesome podcast. Zombie Barbie. Actually, her show's dropping tonight with me on it. I should drop mine too. Who else? Wow. What the hell is this podcast? Damn. Check out my friend Matt's YouTube channel, You and Your Horror Movies. He does unboxings. He does short movie reviews. He's been on here plenty of times. He's also on a podcast called Cinema Attacks, which is Horror, not just horror movies, but mainly horror. They attack all genres. And then me, you should, before I say me, hang on, one more. <laughs> the, night, the Nightmare Shop, the Nightmare Shop, LLC.com. Awesome guys, awesome shop. They really, really love horror. And it's, it's a small business, so, you know, we all like to support that. So definitely go check them out. And now for myself, Horror with Search 30 on Podbean. Spotify, iTunes, pretty much anywhere you can listen to podcast, YouTube, Facebook group, and a Facebook page. The group is for anybody and everybody, including you guys, man. Share anything and everything, everything horror related, including your own projects, your own pages, your own shows. Horror related is all I ask for. The page is more for me, just for the news, that I, whatever you know, whatever's going on. I post it on both, but just because it gets lost in the groups, so I post it on the page as well. So check me out on there. Um, if you're a gamer, sir underscore sturdy is my PSN. If you watch Twitch, horror underscore with underscore sir underscore sturdy. And if you ever want to be on the show, shoot me an email, horror with sir dot sturdy. Again, it's horror with sir dot sturdy at gmail.com. Thank you all for listening. And as always, I'll see you in your nightmare.